everyone. Welcome. You'll have to let me know if anything's off uh, because I have a whole new setup now. Um, welcome to Silence of Shadows. I believe this is episode 47 now. Seven, yep. I think. <laughs> oh my <Crazy>. God. <laughs> That's We're almost 50. to 50. Yeah. <laughs> very, heck? very long season, but What's you know. 80 total episodes of Vampire. I'm not mad. <gasps> I'm here wow. for it. I mean, I was like, I can't who, believe it. Who's That's amazing. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Nobody. That's an accomplishment. <laughs> that really <Yeah>. is. <laughs> um, and I know people in there are already like, no, Baz already? And I'm like, well, yeah. you're going to have to see what happens. Mm -hmm. Mathis has Baz, stuff up his sleeve. Ba Baz will return. Don't you worry. <laughs> but before, or will she? They might, <laughs> who knows? I mean, unless <laughs> Dakota like murders This session, we're like, all right, guys, how are we going to kill Baz? <laughs> 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 You're getting really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Um, well, you know, at least she lived the life that she wanted, right? <laughs> hey, here's the, Til the end, probably. Um, but before we get into all of that, let's go quickly through all of our intro goodies. So we have our supporter today, which we want to extend a huge roll of to in chat. Um, Jackson Decay, thank you so much for supporting today's episode. You too can support an episode be by becoming a legend tier or above over on our Patreon, patreon.com slash roll for it. And I believe our two GMs this month are are Dot and Tracy, actually. From Mrs. Magitech. Yeah! <laughs> what are you running? What are you running, Tracy? Cyberpunk Red, of course. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. We're, yeah. Gonna, uh, we're gonna run Vikings. We're gonna run North <gasps> Oh, that's actually cool. <laughs> that, that's pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, you get to be GM'd by one of our lovely cast members from a variety of our shows, or you know, sometimes our guest characters too. So you never know. You never know what you're gonna get. It's always it's always a good time though. That is the, something that you know you're gonna get. Um, and beyond that, we have our Baz character sheet and monthly recap out. So if you'd like to see what all of the deets are, I know people already have been uh, <laughs> messaging me about stuff. Um, but yeah, there were a lot of questions, and I believe. You know the character sheet's going to answer a lot of that, and it gives a little background of her, like history and stuff like that, uh, time frames, crazy dates because she was in the 1980s type of thing. So definitely go check it out. Um, and beyond that, of course, we have some more stuff coming for Mass Effect and Ascension, and maybe some more for Vampire. So stay tuned. Um, beyond that you know if you want to support us you can support us right here by subscribing on twitch or if you're watching this on youtube becoming a member and those give you access to our vods early on twitch as well as emotes on both of those platforms and access to our discord um beyond that we have tips and bits and if you donate those i will read out the donations at the end of the episode um, and of course, like I mentioned already, our Patreon, our Patreon has a ton of amazing goodies on there from, you know, like if you're just interested in MP3s or if you want to see behind the scene character stuff or GM tier stuff, like a lot of our GMs do polls and things of that sort. Um, and yeah, our, our monthly recap kind of goes over how we run Roll For It and feature plans and whatnot. So if you want a little behind the scenes, that's always a, a, a good thing. So yeah, lots of lots of goodies up there. And of course, we know not everybody can support us monetarily or, you know, even if you want to, uh, you know, you need to take care of yourself first. And that's the most important thing. But there are other free ways that you can support us by either following us on our social channels on Twitter and Facebook at Roll For It and, you know, interacting with us there, retweeting, sharing. I know it seems very uh, silly, but it does make a big, huge difference, as well as leaving comments um, over on our YouTube and giving us a like and all of that jazz subscribing same here on twitch if you follow just being here watching and of course chatting and chat it makes a huge difference for us so thank you so much for joining us and i will toss it over to our lovely storyteller Martha's games hello <clears throat> good to see everybody i'm excited to pick back up um yeah so today's uh i know if you I know we missed a week so if you if you missed last week's episode i highly suggest watching it we have the introduction of boss who is how we're going to actually open this episode up so while the night is still young or rather, the night is not young, but it's not quite near the uh, the start of sunrise. We actually see the, the three of our Coterie members, Ava, Ollie, and Dakota, making their way up a cracked sidewalk where a few, but not many, maybe two or three pedestrians, a couple on the other side of the road, but one passing by you, all just having conversation or just minding their own business, brush by. And as they kind of knock into Dakota's shoulder accidentally, and Dakota gives them a glare as they 
march on and even scurry off as Dakota looks over her shoulder, a little afraid of uh, the rather angry look that is uh, cast in their direction. The movie theater then comes into view as we turn a corner, and the three of them make their way towards and into the front door. Merely an, merely an hour ago, they were in a three-story apartment building. A bunny rabbit had hopped over and taken their invitation, and they sat down with a kindred that spoke in ways that they had never heard a kindred speak to them before, of freedoms that scare them or are potentially even criminal in form. And now that there's privacy and no longer any pedestrians nearby or mortals to hear or any rats nearby as Princess Bella has done a good job at keeping the area clean of any vermin, the three code remembers shut the door behind them as the sounds of late, uh, a late night city get muffled and the eerie quiet of an empty lobby in a movie theater settles around them as the three of them stand about for a moment. Who might be the first one to break the silence? Ava. Okay. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I imagine you see Dakota almost to herself, um, maybe checking the clock and seeing what time it is, maybe even milling about, seeing if she maybe should head back and go home, and Ollie even doing the same thing. Knowing the bar's still open, he could probably catch Grant before he goes home. But then Ava steps forward and speaks. So, um, quiet walk back. I don't think any of us peeped a word. Um, everybody doing all right? After our little meeting with our new friends? I'd like to point out as a storyteller, I watched as Ava, as Ava spoke, Dot's head like sunk further into her chest. <laughs> the more she kept saying <laughs> words to the point where you were like, straight up looking like the emperor like the hood was like bigger than your face (laughs) i mean what is it to say well what does everybody expecting what does everybody think (sighs) she's a little radical for for my taste but you know i don't know you seemed uh pretty quick to kind of some of those ideals Ollie, I'm quick to make friends, but that doesn't mean I'm about to jump on her ship. I think I've learned. (laughs) Wait, does Ava? Does Ava? Okay, does Ava laugh or does Tracy laugh? Because if Ava laughs at herself, the the crew is going to explode. Because Ava, if if you, Ava laughs. I was going to say, if Ava does, I mean, it's easy for Ava to look as serious as she wants. It's, mm-hmm. it's her, she can look and, and pass the tone, however tone, whatever tone she's looking to pass. Does she openly laugh and cackle at the fact that she said she learned? I, I think if Ollie and Dakota both give like stone cold faces like they are right now, Ava would laugh because <laughs> it's just, <laughs> so I could tell you all are unconvinced, but it's fine. It's fine. Why do I need to be convinced of anything? That's the point. I don't need You're right. her convincing me of anything. I don't want... <clears throat> I think that if it helps us get any kind of boon from her, I don't even know if she works that way, then help her with her bar. And if she's right about this whole McTavish thing, that'll be the best thing that came out of the whole night. Other than that, I'm a little frustrated with the amount of sheer privilege she walked in with. I hadn't thought of it that way. So, the fact that I have, we have, for a decade, tried really hard just to exist underneath the thumb of the Camarilla and for her to be able to walk in here and just fuck it. And then to tell us to be chill makes me want to rip the earrings from her earlobes. That being said, if she is what she actually claims to be, then she can do like everybody else and prove it. <sighs> Look, everyone's got a podium, right? 
Everyone's got this soapbox. And, uh, I'm sorry, but she can evangelize all she'd like. I'm not just gonna start drinking the Kool-Aid. And I get it, right? She's a flavor. Chicago will accept her with open arms. No, she's a tall drink of cocoa. I'm not, uh, sipping this. We've been here for a minute. We concreted ourselves here. She gotta earn her place. Can't just walk in making demands. Sure. She's gonna scratch my back and help her with the bar. But short of that, I don't know her shit. Plus, the disrespect. Walking in here. Doing drugs. It's fine, if you know you're immortal. She wants to live her life, let her do it, or her unlife, however long she's got it left, specifically being in Chicago. We'll see. <clears throat> so we agreed to help her then with her bar situation and just leave it at that. Yeah. I don't even know if that, her life. I don't even know that that involves either you. You can make it simple. Precisely. Of course. It's probably best for all of us if it doesn't involve me. <laughs> all of us. So, Ali, if you want to take care of that. And yeah. then we'll leave it at that. For now. Easy enough. That being said, I'm really interested in this McTavish business. I agree. And this, this, this Kindred's ear has got to be burning, all right? This mm. is many times I've heard people saying um, his name. He... <laughs> he is odd business. All right, this I guy's like the next fucking Furby. Well, I want to fucking meet him. That being said, I think. <clears throat> In our very quiet walk back, I was thinking, I know. Novel. But I think we should tell Jackson. About McTavish being here in the city. Yes. Edith said something to me, us, when we were there that night of the party. She said that allowing the Anarchs to exist is a great distraction. That is something that has resonated with me. So, this distraction is necessary potentially for us to help out Jackson. Isn't that the plan? Yes. So, we let him in on it and just kind of let it happen. I see where you're going with this. I think it's good. I think it's a good idea. Ollie, as usual, you're really, uh, really quiet. It makes me nervous. Yeah, I've been hearing that. I'm, uh, get this pensive look constantly. Uh, sorry, the gears turn, and I... Just waiting to see the next piece fall. You know what I mean? We're not the only ones moving. What's McTavish's next move? I don't know. But does it really matter? I mean, shit, if we're his next move, we know that he's here. I don't want to be that move. I don't want to be that move either, but you know what? I feel like we're small cookies in comparison to what McTavish wants. You don't start a war by stomping on a few soldiers at camp. You start a war by bombing Pearl Harbor. <sighs> you know what I mean? All right. All right, it's a, it's a solid idea. We get behind it, and uh, we can we can tell him. I don't know what it's going to gain us. I don't think it's going to get us any favor, but... He gets in the know, and he knows that we have... are well-informed, and... <clears throat> It gives him the leverage to prepare, plan and prepare. If he knows something's going to happen. And you know what? If Jackson decides that's not the move he wants to make, then he can step up and be, you know, the big old savior of the day and stop McTavish. Right? He stepped in last time there was an Anarch problem. It seems that that must be some part of what he's about. I worry if, if he asks us how we know this information. <laughs> Do we tell? Can't exactly tell him we helped McTavish get into the city. No, we I've heard his name. Not tell him that. Yeah, we've, we all we've we heard, did heard his, was name. his name. Plus, a lot. 
I've been researching Gangrel. What up? Easy in. It's fair. It's a good. Additionally, how often does someone like Boss roll through town asking questions about the Anarchs, also particularly true. about McTavish? It's true. We've also been talking about holding the line against Anarch territory. Mm -hmm. and it's easy to keep our ear to the ground. We got plenty of reason to know. All right, I, I gotta, I gotta know. Where do you, where do you stand on? Like, I, I get where your personal feelings are. Boss is very clearly not Camarilla. No. She's not. She didn't really strike a chord with Anarch. Um, nope. <laughs> so there can be only one other thing. Can there? I don't. I don't know everything. I'm not oh. sure if there are there other groups. There may be more. But from what Boss's tone of voice was, she doesn't label herself regardless. I mean, you, I'm guessing you're suggesting Sabat just like myself. Yes. <laughs> but like, have we, have we ever really, like, I don't think I've met any Sabat. And the things that I hear about them, they're like the fucking kindred boogeymen, right? All I've heard of them was through Zach, and he said that they were bad news all around. Yeah, that's what I heard as well. I'm starting to question all the shit that I heard from Zach, though, because if she's Sabat, while I don't like a lot of her, her attitude, her ideas aren't all that unsound. Dakota also met a Sabat in season one temporarily, very briefly, as a gangrel. <clears throat> the back of a bar while you were investigating Mark's bar. Oh, wow. That was a... Uh... That was a long time. Yeah, ago. that was like a very Sorry, I didn't mean to pull that memory out. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what the... That <laughs> Dusted off. I told y'all about that, right? Yeah, you did, think, you did. Yeah, you definitely have told them about I, that. I, re I recall it. I recall okay. that experience. Okay. Uh, it's not the first time we've met a Sabat, right? And from what I can tell, she's not doing anybody any harm but herself and all of her drug bags. So I think we ought to let her be for a while. If she wants to be on our side, I don't have a problem with it. I just don't want to be preached at. I get that. And I feel it as well. She just don't know shit. She can't walk in here and say these things about freedom. Until she's lived in the, the, the cage that we know. Uh, well, I'm gonna guess she's significantly older than we think. That could be possibly not true. Um, yeah, we'll, she, we'll see. <clears throat> she, uh, well, oh, yeah, that being said, I don't, I don't discredit her story. I just, I didn't, I don't need to be converted, you know what I mean? And I definitely don't need her judging my fucking choices of sticking with the camp. Because right now, that's all I got. That's all we got. So, until I can figure out a way to fuck over Bella and the Sheriff, which I'm feeling really good about this McTavish thing, I think we should go to Jackson. And we had a... I, th I think we had a pretty okay business conversation at the concert. Maybe we should follow up. I agree. You know, just thinking about the boss thing. Sorry, it's still in my mind. I, it's, <laughs> Does Dakota's she's face still on my mind. Go, like, <laughs> when she says, sorry, it's still on my mind. Yeah, I just, I'm I imagine there's like a, a grain of PTSD when it comes to Ava and Saito and poor choices with mm -hmm. Dakota. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's okay. So, I mean, it, it go, Okay, so continue, Ava. Yes, I don't uh, mean to interrupt, but please. we watched Dakota's face drop as uh, boss mm -hmm. is kind of brought right back up. She had a lot of bravery coming to us and uh, spouting her views on life and I don't how she lives. Bravery. Because what stops us from going to the prince right now and telling her that a individual who hasn't announced themselves with somewhat borderline Sabat ideals, very an older kindred? We have no proof. We know where she lives, or where she's we don't. We know hanging she's, her head. We know where she's hanging her head. You know, <laughs> we know where she's what drinking did, people. What did we know about that bar? All right, you want to talk about Bass? I want to know what the fuck she's doing here. All right, what do we know about that bar? Uh, did that she it? not tell you? Didn't she tell you what she was doing? She. Uh, she told us to what she clarify. thought she was doing. Yeah, yeah. So she okay. was here taking over the bar after her 
once Coder, ex- was coterie yeah. ex coterie member mm-hmm. uh is is now dead cuz oops she, yeah he's, um, she's investigating his disappearance his disappearance yeah. Yeah, yeah but but she talked Funny. about wanting to renovate the bar i'm talking about what she wants to do with it she said she wants it all oh yeah, yeah yeah gotcha gotcha oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah yeah she said she uh, she hinted at she, making i think she said what if we make it disappear something disappear like disappear. Like, like an invisible bar mm-hmm. specifically for anarchs And I'm she not did say saying... it's permission to go in and out. That could be really helpful. I'm not saying that that's some I want to just go tell on her or anything, but I'm saying it's it's really it's good information to have. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, leverage. In hopefully, hopefully. All right. Um, right. Uh, let's. Uh... Sun's coming up. So I'm we're not going the... to the Camarilla and turning in boss was the end of the conversation. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, was it, was it? Just, okay. it was just a thought. Not, not yet. Not, but... not yet. <laughs> so we're currently assuming... playing the game where it's like, how how do we get value out of knowing about them and yeah. of them? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, the night comes to an end yeah. then. And before evening, I imagine one of you puts out a, a, a notice to uh, a contact of Mr. Jackson to let him know the three of you would like to meet and hope to hear back the next night. And as you all do, do you all stay in the movie theater this night? Is everybody kind of separate and go their separate ways? Just out of curiosity. Doesn't really mean anything. Mm. I'm just curious. Uh, if Ava would go back to the tower, I think. Okay. Tower. I'll stay oh. here. Stay here. I was for, say, can yeah. I make it on four small wheels to the boat? Yep. You, you still have enough time to get to the boat on your skateboard. You could make it in time. Another hour or so. You're and you're fast. You have celerity. And and we're, wait, strength. we're at the theater, yeah? Yeah, you're at the theater mm-hmm. right oh, now. So you can that. stay I'm here. Not, I'm not going to, I'm not skateboarding back across Chicago. Okay, so just Ava leaves then. Ava heads <laughs> back to the tower. The two of you stay here for the evening. The night passes. Can I get a rouse check for the following evening? As the sun rises, the day passes. <clears throat> None of you are staked in your un- unrest. I got. Uh... No hunger for all three of you. Oh, nope. Never mind. Ollie gets a little hungry. Uh, so what's everybody's hunger at? One. Three. One. Ooh, hung- okay. Oh, Ollie, as you, as your eyes open this evening and you stand up and prepare yourself for another night as uh, you seemingly blink, and as you blink and you wake up, you look to your hand and you can see just the subtle shakes and the consistent thought of that, of the beast being hungry and needing to feed. So you could feed here. You have a, a difficulty roll. It's the beginning of the night. There are enough pedestrians outside. We're going out and finding one uh, in your own domain was rather simple. So if you want to roll against the chase of the difficulty for your domain, which I think we said it was a difficulty of two with all the stuff that you put into it, I think. Yeah. Um, even with Ollie's feeding style, like it, it's just very out of character for, for him to just go grab someone like this. So, so he's I just going to hold on to it hold and, on uh, and wait until he's back around the bar. Okay. Do you want to head, would you head back to the bar early in the evening as everybody prepares and kind of assumes they'll hear from Jackson within the night? Um, yeah, he's a got three a, hunger for, I just to remind our three hunger is not, you can't really shoulder that off. That's not something no. you can just kind of be like, I'm fine. It yeah. is a nagging thought. So, um, does Ollie head back to the bar then? Yeah, he probably will. Dakota, I mean, it's not like you need to have a conversation. You've seen hunger overtake Ollie now many a time, and it's just something everybody has to deal with. And so he heads off on his own. Do you join him or do you stay in the movie theater? It's a, fr- it's a... No, I think I just hang. We're all going to Jackson, right? Waiting to hear back from Jackson right now. Yeah, yeah. you sent him to your lab, so you just stay here. Ava will yeah, join Dakota the movie theater. Out. Yeah, I'm, I'm Ollie, easy. um, you're. I think uh, specifically in your. Uh, well, when you head back, there will be somebody who needs, um, to be, not pacified, but put to, to sleep for a little bit as they're coming in fresh, uh, off of trying to shake, uh, a particular addiction. Um, they were there since last evening, but you weren't. You weren't there obviously last evening. Things were busy, and you stayed in the movie theater. Uh, and as you're brought in, Grant, as as he's kind of very busy, he doesn't even able to bring you in the back. He just says, room two. Uh, she arrived last night and she's in a, some bad shape. Okay. Okay. Um, just something, uh, you know, your bar occasionally has. Yeah, that's it's not uncommon. Since it's Am been I... 24 hours, the majority of the drugs in her bloodstream are going to be either weakened or not particularly potent enough to put you on your ass or have you feel any of the effects of whatever it is she's imbibed, uh, sure. just to make that clear as well. Okay, yeah, then um, I, I, I'll i get some some petty cash, and uh, if this is going to kind of put her out for a little while, um, you know, I'll tell Grant, you know, make sure get her some, some food and drink. She's going to be mm-hmm. down for another day or so. 
you're gonna feed two from her and yep. uh when you open the door and you actually take a look in she's skin and bones she looks like she's malnourished uh, malnourished uh malnourished like the clothes are incredibly loose fitting on her um the, one of her one of those her shirt t-shirt sleeves like sags down towards her elbow uh and the jeans she wears are like the belt is tied super tight to just even hold them up uh, feeding from her you could feed two off of her um but it would treat as though you fed three from her so it would put her out for like two-ish days one day solid and then another day of like hard recovery and then by the third day she might be feeling herself but at that point who knows where she'll be in the terms of withdrawal uh, just to give you an idea of what feeding two from her is going to do she looks super super weak sure um not even conscious when you step in the sun or the light that even that kind of uh, floods into the room and just grazes her face is doesn't even cause a flinch her face is incredibly pale all right and i know that um I know that that kindred blood can do a lot for for moral. It can expedite some some of the, the natural healing processes. Yeah, that's how you make a ghoul, buddy. Yeah, but I think I thought the ghouling process was like a multi tiered. Like you got to do it several times. I want to double really check. Do. It may be a three nighter. I think it's I think it's three times. I think it is. I mean, blood bonding and similar. You can go three, but let me just let me double check. I just want to make sure that that's the rule. Mathis has a new shiny book. I do. It's the fancy version of it oh boy we just want to make sure that that she's not gonna die yeah 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 well unless you're oh. you're not at four so you're not going to risk hunger frenzying and draining her without with the resistance so you can feed and pull out with a pull back without like killing her uh here we go well that was the wrong page thanks book when when the the index is like ghoul and then ghouls and you're like all right i'm just gonna pick one and hope it's the right Which page one? and like yeah. 200 pages yeah. apart <laughs> so we'll go back to 234 instead yeah, if it's if it's not gonna kill her because of the uh the effects of like what withdrawal is going to do to her while she's exhausted um then it'll mm. be fine but i'll probably come back and check on her the next night as well no it's just one is it just one okay a rouse checks worth of vitae it's all it takes. And a mortal gains the first dot of their master's highest rated discipline. The aging process completely halts for uh, for 30 days and wounds heal twice as fast unless they were caused by fire. But if, if she goes off, if she goes off another month, right? Another month without uh, without the blood, then the I mean, ghouling she's gonna, is She's going to feel... Oh yeah, the ghouling will... The aging will catch back up. She'll age 30 days. Um, sure. And all that stuff will be gone, but... um. I mean, kindred blood, you know, is an addictive thing. You it see, is. Look, it's very addictive. Yeah. I also don't know how many ghouls you can have at a certain time right now. You might lose Grant as a ghoul if you give her a ghoul, because I think the number of ghouls is limited by your blood potency. I will, I'll double check that, but I'm pretty sure you, you get limited on the number of ghouls you can have barring certain things. Uh, but we'll check. Sunlight, and a no. That's wild. Well, maybe, I guess... maybe not. Maybe you can have as many ghouls as you want. I don't see anything about her limit. I'm thinking of something else. This wasn't and, really oh, I'm th I might be thinking of blood bonding. Blood bonding yeah. and limit thralls you can have. I think that's what I'm thinking of. Ghouls, you might be able to have as many as you want. Yeah, so do you want to? But if if, if my blood can get her through the withdrawal... Oh, um, it definitely will. Yeah. Your blood will do a lot. Your blood, A kindred blood will do a whole lot to help her out. It'll heal her wounds super fast. She'll recover quicker. She's going to get... What's your highest? It's potence. Okay, so what's the first dot in potence that you have? Um, one I, dot power? My one dot power is um, lethal body. Okay, so she'd gain lethal body. Okay, um, then just for the sake of this, I, I'm... So you're going to feed two and give one? Yes. Feed two, give one. And it's just so I can kick her through the withdrawal. Okay. Uh, feed two first. So you yep. go down to one. Then yep. give me a rouse check. Mm-hmm. Okay. You don't get any hunger. And how do you feed her your blood? Do you, like, just slice, slice open your palm? Uh, whereabouts do you do you kind of... Because you'd have to prop her mouth open and, and drip it into her mouth and make sure she swallows because she's unconscious right now. Uh, it's probably, like, just on between the index and the thumb, like, right here. And... Uh, and I just like flex enough to kind of push it out. Keeping the wound open as it attempts to heal very quickly, constantly. 
Yes. And so you feed her a, uh, a drop of blood, and as it kind of hits her tongue, and you watch it as it oozes its way back to the throat, and you massage her throat gently to make sure she does truly imbibe and swallow it, and you're confident she's done so. You, uh, you stand up and uh, hope it takes its course. It's hard to tell if it works immediately. You might see a little color return to her skin almost instantly as the blood kind of courses through her veins. Um, but she's uh, not only unconscious prior to when you got to her, but you fed on her as well. So it's going to take, even healing at twice as fast, it's yeah. going to take a little time for her to be getting up. I'll let Grant know. Um, I'm going to put the, the you let money know about in her, the whole pocket. Thing? Yeah, um, that she's she's in bad shape. Uh, she's going to be out for a couple of days. But do you tell him that you gave her Vitae? Yes. Okay. Uh, he would immediately, so as I would say, just go ahead and say, say it how you would say it so I can, I can get into Grant. She, she wasn't really in good shape back there. Uh, I don't know if she would have made it. Um, I needed to feed. And she was, it looks like she was already going to be down a couple of days. So, um, after feeding on her, I gave her, gave her a little bit of blood to keep her from death's door. He steps back and he kind of raises an eyebrow in curiosity. Oh shit, dude, you do that often, boss? I don't want to see anybody die. Especially if they come here for a safe haven. And it's blood. You know, it's just blood. Uh, I, uh, I'm i not trying to step out of place or nothing, but, you know, when it comes to that time of the month, for me, that itch, that desire. Yeah, yeah, I know. And if you're telling me she doesn't even know you did it? She has no idea. What's that going to do? I don't know, but in 30 days, when the itch kicks and there's no one there to sate that need, it'll fall off. She'll have her own withdrawals there, but she'll survive it. What's she gonna do? Is she gonna approach someone? Hey, I need something real strong. Something's gonna kick that itch, but nothing's gonna hit the same way. She just needs to make sure that she can survive through this withdrawal right now. He, he kind of just nods and uh, bites his lower lip a bit, clearly thinking, but then just shakes his head. All right, all right. I mean, I don't... I can't even pretend to know half the shit you know, so. I don't even know if I know everything. It's just a judgment call more than anything. And I just know that I don't want to see a whole lot of people die just because. Chicago's okay. got its its grips and people, Grant. And if I can loosen that, that bond at all, then it is what it is, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I'll look out for her. Make sure when you know, whenever she opens them eyes of hers that she got some food and we send her out the door with a warm meal. You good? You you feeling that uh, that that itch? Uh, it's actually only been a couple weeks, I think. So um, he shakes his head and he's like, "No, no, I'm good right now." Uh, I think he actually he does walk walk over to a, like a big paper calendar that's been taped up on like a, or not like a, a paper calendar, a white a whiteboard that's a calendar, and he actually like looks like he has it circled. He's like, "No, nah, I'm good for like another week and a half. Uh, I'll come knocking on your door a few days before. I don't want to be left in the dirt like I was a couple times ago." Are you in good hands, Doc? No, she is. She's for the streets. I trust her. I don't think you really understand. I, uh, when that time of the month comes around, there's really nothing else that's ever dominated my mind like that. I, no drug chase. I can honestly say now, I've been doing this now for a while, is ever, has ever been, and will ever be as intense as trying to get what you can give me at the end of every month. It is... Uh, boss, I'll be fucking honest. It's all consuming. It eats me up alive. You have no idea of what it's like to lose total control. You feel that pull from from the addiction. But when you have to take back seat and let some deeper nasty ride you shotgun and exhaust your powers to the full limit. Is that really any different than when my addiction commanded my every action before you came into my life, where every Grant. night was dominated by a desperate attempt to get my next fix, and I would steal and hurt anybody I needed to to make sure I could get to my dealer. Grant, you could, you could shoot a man with a pistol. You could steal some kid's lunch money. I can pick up a car and tear it in half, and I don't stop until I'm dead, or a stake is through my heart. Is it different? 
Not very. It's just a semblance of the same beast in all of us. It's just the amount of damage that we can wreak. That's a lot scarier. That's my beast. That's my addiction. And I've only seen it once. It was enough. It was enough. That's why I... If you finally make it to where we are, if you decide that you want to pull that trigger and you want to become a kindred, well, you get to see it firsthand. And while I still can't, it doesn't mean that I'm not working and trying to find a way for you to become what you want to be. He doesn't say anything. Uh, you can see him kind of suck his bottom lip in again and chew on it as he just uh, takes it in. Not that he's ignoring you, but clearly no additional input. And no matter what he seems to be thinking, and even the few times he looks like he might say something, he just kind of holds back and he nods. Yeah, no, there's not. You're right. I mean, there's no fucking way I could know. I'll but trust me, I was, uh, I was a kid on the streets too. I had, uh, I had some, I had some shit coursing through my system very early on. He, I had to stop though. A... I had to stop like, right? Like make it in, in, into the boxing, like early pro-am. They test you for everything. You get a bagel the wrong way. They know. He lets out like a short burst of a chuckle before, uh, he clearly loosens up a bit. I'll make sure she's got an extra blanket too. I think we got a spare we can send her out with. You know, Grant, if you ever need to talk about anything. You're the only one I talk to, bud. I promise. All right. If Ava came knocking at my door, I wouldn't say no. The ladies are just as good about it. They can probably give you some insight that I can't. Their beast is totally different than mine. And they're all from different clans. Boss, I can only tell you I pretend to know what the fuck that means. I've pieced it together a little bit. There's something about, like, each one of you that's a little different. And, uh... That's why you got a weird face and probably why Dakota's angry all the time. Well, after my, uh, after my meeting tonight, I'm going to go see uh, Mr. Jackson. I'll see if I can get the ladies come in and, and give you a, at least a, a TLDR, a shakedown of what some of the clans are like. How many of uh, different like clans are you? Like... Yeah, you remember that, uh, that, that, uh, that dark skinned beauty that walked in the other night? Yeah, I just met her, and uh, her, her clan or her sect or whatever the fuck they are. I don't know, but that was a new one for me. I'm still meeting them. Oh, it's like, okay. So not each one of you is a different, okay. This is very confusing. Well, look, we're all kindred. We're all the quote-unquote vampires, but we all have different, we all have different abilities. We all come from, uh, I don't know, man, we're like, like we're Justice like fucking, League. sort of, kinda, kinda, I guess. I don't know. We're, we're like danger Pokemon, I guess. It's Who's weird. Martian Manhunter. I'll talk with you later, Grant. I don't have time for this. <laughs> and as you like, as you kind of separate and realize he's just trying to pull you into a garbage conversation and you walk away, he cackles. And then you hear him scoop up his metallic uh, spatula and uh, the, you hear the sizzle of a few new patties hit the grill as he, uh, as Haley's like, where the fuck you been? Like, sorry, boss came in. Got to answer to the boss. And uh, he <laughs> continues to cook as uh, Ollie makes his way back out. Everybody eventually reconvenes back at the movie theater. Ava would arrive first, leaving Ava and Dakota some alone time. Would there any conversation, conversation the two of you would like to have? I imagine I'm out front. Sure, you're out front. Ava 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 coming. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> you see Ava <laughs> coming, being dropped off uh, from, through some, tint, some tinted window like Uber car, a uh, good block out as she steps out. What color dress does Ava choose for this evening? Um, Ava will be wearing a deep purple Ooh, dress. A deep purple yeah. dress that mm. flows just a bit, uh, like an inch or two behind her. Oh, and maybe like three inches off the ground, just almost touching it, but not quite. And you can hear the clacking of her heels on the concrete, even over the muttering of the pedestrians that are milling about. Ava, you can see over the pedestrians, see Dakota waiting for you and you two lock eyes before you. <laughs> There's a little pleasant Ava, wave from Ava, Ava to Dakota. Waves. <laughs> <laughs> and walks inside. I'll, I'll leave Dakota to her uh, her skateboarding, and I'll go inside. <laughs> and then eventually, uh, did she just <laughs> skateboard waiting for Ollie as well? Uh, yeah, I mean, if we're just convening, Dakota's just chilling. You're just convening, yeah. and then eventually about an hour, hour and a half later, Ollie would return as well from the bar. You were waiting for Jackson, and hopefully uh, a response from either one of his errand boys or girls, or a phone call, or maybe the, the occasional visit as he has been known to arrive at your front door every so often. 
But after about a couple of hours of milling about and even chatting, um, there is a, uh, a rap at your front door, which is weird because most people just kind of walk in to your movie theater. But there is a gentle knock. Who would answer? I'll go ahead and answer. Okay. Ollie, as you make your way over and just kind of push the door open or pull it open as it, as it may be, uh, and you take a look outside, there's a, a young woman with blonde hair and a tight bun, uh, business casual all the way down. And uh, she smiles at you with a warm, uh, with like a warm greeting. Uh, and she simply uh, gestures over her shoulder. And behind her is a, uh, like a, a personal, you don't call it a limo, but it, it's like a little bit bigger than a normal car with tinted windows and the like. Uh, it's like a Buick of some sort. I can't think of the name of the car. But regardless, she actually gestures and says, like, Mr. Jackson uh, has received your, Mr. Jackson has received your request for a meeting and requests uh, to meet this evening as it's the only time he has free. So what's this in the car? What is he? She smiles. The car will take you to his location. Okay. All right. Nice. So. <laughs> On the skateboard. <sighs> you get I... the top of the skateboard off of the ground and I... you lean it up against the, the wall or you take it with you? No, I think Dakota's probably it. figured out a sling so she can have it on her back. Are you taking that with us, Dakota? I Can't you leave it here? Every... No. Uh, we're just going to see Jackson. We're not going to the skate park. <laughs> Yeah, well, you have cars drop you off and stuff, Ava. I do everything on foot, and I also can't jump the literal links of building like Ollie. It's all right. It's part of her aesthetic, right? It's just like your clicky clackies. Is it necessary to wear heels? Okay. Fine. It's <laughs> fine. The whole while you're just conversing, the young lady is watching with a pleasant grin on her face, just <laughs> waiting and with welcoming girl. eyes. And as soon as you kind of finish the argument, you all turn around. She smiles at whoever is first and gestures to the car, please this way, and walks you over to the car. I get in with the skateboard. She opens the door. And as you walk in with the skateboard, she says nothing and just looks and smiles pleasantly, followed by Ali, I assume, and then Ava. And she shuts the door behind you gently. And then uh, she falls into the passenger side as the driver is entirely different person completely. Um, she, she pulls up like a, an iPad of a sort and she's filing through some things, but before anything important happens, uh, the driver just looks to her. She gives a nod. He presses a button and the window between the drivers and the passengers Chance. raises up. You hear the car gently begin to roll out and you begin to drive a gentle ride into the depths of Chicago proper. There is, as you look around, a small bottle of champagne and a few glasses around, should anybody like any. But that would require a rouse check, of course. If only. <laughs> I wish. I wish yeah, I could. Humanity's but rough. A we have a can't. <laughs> but you drive and further, further, eventually into uh, downtown Chicago, proper Toreador territory, where you're drift and uh, where you're pulling into a uh, uh, parking garage near a rather upscale steakhouse. As you drive in, and uh, you're uh, as you drive into the the uh, the parking. God, I can't, the word for some reason keeps escaping my, my goddamn brain. The parking the deck? deck, sure, works. The parking deck. Uh, it stops shortly after uh, as it enters in, off, pulling off to the side where there's a small sidewalk that leads in and out. And the, the, the window then comes down. She, uh, she turns she's like, are you ready? The woman with the bun, smiling. He has it reservations was... and he pu she pulls out, oh. uh, she pulls up her wrist, uh, pulls back her sleeve. In about 20 minutes, he's expecting you in about five. Well, okay. okay. Um, well, we, chop, chop. Yeah, we should make haste She then. nods to that and she opens up the side door, then makes her way over to the passenger side door and pops open that one, and then walking to the other side and opening that one. As you all file out, and she's already standing on the sidewalk, giving you that pleasant smile. As the door is shut, she looks at the driver and she's like, uh, please wait here for when we, uh, for our return. And uh, he just nods, the window rolls up, and the car drives off to park in an empty spot. She looks at the three of you, follow me, and she begins to walk. Outside amongst the people, it's weird. You're sticking out a little bit. Everybody in this particular area is dressed to the nines. They are in suit and tie. The only one who actually blends in hilariously really is Ava. She is dressed about as well as everybody else dressed here. They are in their finest attire. Dakota draws a lot of eyes. However, the lady leading you all doesn't seem to care. She doesn't bother speaking to anybody, nor does she look back to you or uh, tell you anything. You're brought right to the front of this uh, of, up, this upscale steakhouse. We'll call it Pega Steakhouse. There we go. Done. Um, the, the, the host at the very front just has a brief few words with her that you can't hear. Uh, it's too loud and too many people are talking before 
She just looks to you and ushers you past. You go through a line of people that are waiting to enter this place, and you are just bust past every single person. You can even hear during Seed Dakota very openly a few people scoffing and even pointing at you and saying some things. One person even dropping the F-bomb quietly under their breath that you can still clearly pick up. I imagine Dakota does her best, however, to bite her tongue and walk into the uh, double glass push doors into this place. And as the doors sl- slide close behind you, all that noise on the outside sh- gets completely muted. Not much on the outside actually makes its way in. And you are brought through the entire dining room where most people keep to their own, but a few eyes can't help but look up. And as you mush- push past these t- uh, tables lit by candlelight and these steaks that are probably $40 plus, you're brought back to a further back room, down some stairs, and to a private dining area with a rather large table. Mr. Jackson sits at the head of it, having some light conversation with Mr. Sovereign to his right, and a few others to his left that don't seem to be any recognizable faces to any of you. There's a few nods and smiles before he looks up and sees the three of you. He ushers a few of them away, but Mr. Sovereign stays by his side. The lady stays at the stair, the base of the stairs as she walks through, and she says, Mr. Jackson is expecting you and then turns to leave as soon as he waves the three of you over. Before we walk over, I want to lean down to Dakota, just so we're like, it's like right next to her head and she can only hear me. And uh, I say, the jealous, don't let them get to you. The guppies, and you're gorgeous. You have to lie to me. Hey, I suck at lying. <sighs> Fuck them, right? That's right. As you walk your way over to uh, the table, and Mr. Jackson gives you all a very pleasant smile. He simply gives a very uh, a gesture to some other chairs for you to pull out and join him. This place is also uh, lit purely by candlelight, but as you look above, there's a gorgeous golden crystal chandelier that hangs down. That is either one of two things as you look at it. $50 from Pure One Imports, or priceless beyond reason. He just looks to the three of you. Well, it's good to three to see the three of you, and I appreciate you reaching out to me. You wish to speak with me, so he looks over to Mr. Sovereign. Before we get down to brass tacks of what the three of you would like to speak to me about, Mr. Sovereign here said he spoke with you and had brief words. I'm curious how those dealings and negotiations amongst the three of you have gone. Mr. Sovereign simply leans back and he kind of adjusts his glasses. Again, no pressure. I'm just believe- curious where you stand. I believe we're interested in hearing further about this, and as discussed prior, the finances that would be suited in moving in our direction are not as necessary as I believe that you might come to believe. We're more interested in the connections, the uh, potential allied individuals, and how we can benefit each other further. Uh, Mr. Sovereign actually leans forward, putting both of his elbows on the table and leaning his the chin against his hands as he crosses his fingers. A coterie more... shall we say... Abs- uh, looking forward. One that sees 10, 20, 30 years in the future as opposed to five. I can appreciate that. Monetary uh, flow through your own domain would be inevitable if I was to help uh, restructure some of those things, an investment that is, uh, it's unavoidable. However, we can ensure that only the necessary funds are spent and more suitable arrangements between myself and your coterie are established as part of the business deal. This in turn lies only within the domain residing around the blocks of the theater. Correct. I'm merely investing within your own personal domain. Say we expand. When that happens, should it happen, we can speak again. But expansion requires the approval of more than just your own ambition. The prince would have to need, would have to give you a nod of approval. I am aware how the process works. Ava? Do you have any insight? Any words, concerns? None. I think that... I think that there is a good relationship that we can all have here. And I am interested in moving forward as well. 
Then I'll have my men reach out to you for a second business meeting. So they get together. Of course. We'd be happy to uh, to host you. I wouldn't maybe. want to take any more of... Oh, please. Uh, I said Dakota. maybe a proper tour. Yes. Of the area. I would quite enjoy seeing this newfound territory for a young coterie such as yourself. I think that's a great idea. Well, it's been a pleasure, and I wouldn't want to take any more of Mr. Jackson's time. I understand the three of you have business to attend to. So, and he puts his hand on Mr. Jackson's shoulder. Kevin, I'll see you later. And he actually pushes himself past the table and stands up, uh, kind of straightens out his suit, and uh, just leaves with a pleasant wave. He makes his way up the stairs. You can hear the doors open and hear the chatter of the dining room before it shuts again, leaving just yourself and the three of, uh, and Mr. Jackson down here alone. First name basis. You guys must go way back. Mr. Sovereign and I have known each other for many years. I trust him and he trusts me. Hmm. Now, the three of you reached out to me. How can I help? Well, we've come with some news. And I don't know how to present it, so I'll let them take, uh, take point here. There's a name that came up recently in our recent endeavors, and it's a bit of a concern. And so we wanted to bring it to your attention. Amy just kind of gives a, a, a gentle, subtle shrug and seems to just look expectantly at The last time we met with you, I appreciated the things that you had to say. And we meant what we said. I have no doubts that you do. Over the last few weeks, I've heard a name, a reoccurring one. More importantly, within the last few nights, we've learned that this person plans to make a rather valued attempt against the Camarilla. Now, on any other occasion, or say a few months ago, when I still bear a label, I would have had a problem with that. We might have had a problem with that. But now, we would like to share it with you, because our interests seem aligned. You bring this to my table and expect to share this with me, and why won't you bring it to the sheriff, or perhaps even the prince's table? The sheriff has a personal issue with me. I'm aware. As much as I would say I'd like to, I don't prefer being a punching bag for a man who doesn't deserve me. You know? I have dedicated myself to keeping this city fucking safe. We all have, in our own ways. Sacrificed a hell of a lot. It's clear that you have a love for the city, Dakota. That is not in question, I promise then it benefits all of us, including my interest in this city. If a person worthy of sitting on the council is there, he's going to make an attack, and I don't think there's anything we can do to stop it, even if we wanted to. Do you know what the attack is going to be? No. We do not, but from what we hear, he's been here for some time, so his plans are likely in motion as we speak. You say you have his name. McTavish. You watch as he, his, his brow furrows a bit before he looks to the, to, back to the three of you. A name that I've also heard in passing, but not much detail. A gangrel. Anarch aligned and fierce. I was under the impression he might be a bruja, but a gangrel would fit. No offense to your kind, of course, Dakota. I do cherish them. None taken. That being said, I don't think the Anarchs are as weak as we think. Clearly they, they have plans. 
scattered, but... The Ardivor says, appear weak when you are strong, and strong when you are weak. Right now, they look really weak. You catch a very quick, small smirk when you quote, <laughs> when you make that quote. And he looks to you and smiles. They're coming to make war, Jackson. And it will be the downfall of Bella. If we want it to be. That's when you actually, he, he sits up a little bit more upright. Our discussions were that of taking the seat on the Venture Primogen Council. Now the toppling of the prince is an entirely new, much more ambitious and dangerous thing to be saying out loud, Miss Dakota Rain. There must be a lot of trust that you have in me. I stood in front of an Elysium. The night they took Ava's mother's head. He might have been there. And in front of everybody, I told the prince, I am nothing but honest and dedicated. She took that for granted. He leans heavily forward now. The grin on his face gone. He tr truly locks eyes with you. He lets that kind of sit for a moment, Dakota, as he looks kind of just deeply into you. The gesture of trust is appreciated, but I'd be him. But it'd be foolish not to teach you a lesson. Never so freely feed information even to those you trust like that. It could be the end of your career in the Camarilla or your own life as a kindred. Everything is a gamble. And your Especially. job working within the Camarilla is to ensure that the odds are always on your side. Why do you think we're sitting at this table? He leans back when you say that. His arms and his fingers unfurl. You aren't wrong. Your trust is well placed. We have worked together for a while now. The things you've told me have always been honest. I've looked into them deeply every time. And your proposal is what, then? You feed this information to me. I have a few options with it, but it seems that yours are... Or should I say the three of you have perhaps put a little bit more thought into this than you let on. With this information, I could walk to Bella place myself at her side, cast myself in a positive light, warn her of such an attack, and perhaps earn my seat on the council quite so simply. No bloodshed, no damage. But now you speak of toppling, Bella. <clears throat> yes. Perhaps using this as an opportunity to do the opposite. Shed light on her. Failures to the city. Perhaps I'm being too subtle. Are you implying to seat somebody else? Our implications are to make sure that you make your nice Ventru ass directly into the Primogen spot. I don't see anyone else being super fit for that position. Mr. Sovereign has no interest whatsoever. And Ballard, well, he's a beast of his own right. Not that he gets along with absolutely everyone he meets. And, well, the previous Primogen, she played it loose and hard, and unfortunately caught up to us, and she was a friend. You are not so different than the three of us. Bones are tricky. I don't want someone to owe me. I want loyalty. I want to know that I can help someone, and know later that they have no qualms offering me the same kind of support. You seem like that sort of person. Not even kindred, just person, Mr. Jackson. If I'm wrong, please inform me. He sits in thought for a while there. Before relaxing a little bit and speaking. I 
I apologize for my loss of words. My trust in the three of you is honest. As you said, you presented me things and not have been, not one has been covered in lies, as far as I can tell. But the three of you have a history as well. A deep one in Chicago. A history of loyalty to the prince. Loyalty to the city and her rule. So you have to bear with my skepticism. As the three of you walk in, where our initial discussions were that of a primogen seat, very attainable and beneficial for all of us, no matter your loyalties. And now I'll perhaps speak of overthrowing the most powerful person in this city, the one that you all served incredibly willingly. Mm, not right there. That's a choice term. We serve because it is the only way that we can. Mr. Jackson, you only know so much. And you do know quite a lot. That I looked at the others many, and... Many, he actually will, as you look around at the others, he will speak and say that sentence has deep implications. Yes, it does. That comes with a lot of trust. But you asked a question. When I don't think we got to answer. If not her, then who? I think you know the answer to that question. The elephant in the room, perhaps. Who else is fit to rule Chicago? Ask any of my clan, and they say they are. So why me? Because Don't you didn't rise to the occasion right here and just say that you were the best. Even an earnest man can call his own worth into question. I'm sure we each have our own reasons. I have a list. A list of reasons? Yes. How very unique. Be Bella, she's been... Successful. Successful. She's been good to us in many ways, but she's also been cruel, wicked, and vile. You said that we chose to serve her. You may want to reconsider those words. I'm aware of your unique situation. Miss Rain and I did not mean to imply. I meant your coterie as a whole. Yes, continue to align. We are survivors, Jackson. All three of us, and you know that. It's why you continue to put up with us, I believe it. I put up with you because you've proven useful. And no doubt that we will continue. But the fact of the matter is, she's done us wrong. And she does not deserve to sit there. Your words could get you killed, Dakota. And Every if day I, I agree with them, they could get me killed. I don't need you to agree with them. We just wanted to be honest with you and put it on the table. Your choice of what you do with it, Jackson, we can't... We can't stop you. The long and the short of it, at the end of the day, the most prescient point of this, McTavish is going to make an attack against the Camarilla. And it's probably in the name of the Anarchs from what we've gathered. Expect it. It will be erupt. And... From the history of Chicago, I bet it's fairly explosive. I just... It's beyond that. I do not see what you gain in removing her. What is it that the three of you would gain? You have been given domain. Very Mr. Jackson, it's, it's not a matter of what we gain, it's a matter of what we lose. Sometimes things are worth losing. What is it that you're going to lose that is worth losing? Puppet strings. Oh, Mr. Hopkins, everybody has puppet strings in the city to somebody. 
is there mm, I'd like I'm given I look over to Dakota and I'm given given her the eyes of like do we say something like the you know eyes I looked at to Ava is Ava, Ava like no Ava Ava shakes her head I, <laughs> like Jackson, now now is Jackson. Is this subtle at all? No, <laughs> like, ja- no, ja- Dakota. Yeah, yeah. Cut, Dakota cuts Jackson, in. Like as as you... is looking around, Dakota cuts in. You are a really smart man. You hold smart company. You understand what it is and how it is to rise to power. Even if you have not made it to the top yet. Stop and look at the last 15 years in this city. Bella's rise to power is not how one might say normal. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Bella reinstated the Lissambra as allowed back in in Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. As I said, there's a laundry list of reasons. And... I think with maybe the right, the right trust, we could give you all of our reasons. I'm aware. If I'm to do this with you, do you understand that I am going against whoever's puppet strings that you are so tied to, that you so openly tell me of? Who? Why? I cannot walk into war knowing of only half the intel. Does he have a pen by chance? Yeah, there's one in his pocket. You can actually see just like a very fancy fountain pen kind of tucked into his front pocket next to a folded, whatever you call that handkerchief thing. Every great army has a leader, a real leader. Not the one on the battlefield, but the one that sits in a castle and pulls those strings. I ask him to borrow his pen. After listening to Dakota say that again, staying vague, before he's going to say anything, uh, Ollie asks for the pen. He just kind of simply reaches in, still looking at Dakota and hands it to Ollie. Um, I want to write in my palm, um, you know, I'm just, I'm going to, ah, damn, there's no way I can. So I want to write in my palm, mm-hmm. a Methuselah sleeps under Chicago. Okay, I mean, yeah, you could, you could write that in your palm. And right. I'm, I'm going to do so like very close to Cuff because I already know what a is capable of. And, um. Do you look around? Do you look for shadows? Oh, hell yes. Shadows. I would, um, Holes, Yes. The way this place is lit, there are shadows everywhere. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> can I sense the unseen at this moment? You're welcome to. You can always have that uh, on. If I see, yeah. if I see what uh, Ollie's doing, then I will immediately in that moment. Do you grab Ollie like just for a minute and just be like, Yeah, I on. grab his hand as, as soon as he's done writing and I kind of wait, wait before we reveal that bit of information. Yep, yep. I mean, Wits Awareness just gonna make me a, uh, a Wits Awareness check rather with Sense the Unseen activated and stuff. Um, but you, would you like to willpower three of those? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rolled kind of crappy. Uh, all right, so three. With three, I mean, three is a, a, a te- technically beating a difficult roll, a hard roll. Um, it seems clear. But you're not super familiar with how the, the Lissandra really work. <laughs> you see no ghosts and or invisible things. Mr. Jackson. <laughs> I, I look at Ollie and like I says, "Are you? Do you really want to do this right here, right now?" Well, like, uh, like on on the front of my hand, I'm gonna write "Sovereign," right? Like, I want to look like I'm writing down important information because he Ollie doesn't carry around a notepad, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So just in case anything's happening, but like while he looks back up, he's starting to write, "A Methuselah sleeps under Chicago." And I would not at that moment after looking, I would nod to to Ollie that it's safe, quote unquote. Okay. Uh, Dakota lets go of Ollie's hand and I um I'm, I'll stand up. and I, I bring I bring the the pin back to Jackson and he gives you a curious look as you walk over to him. I'll place the pin back in his pocket and um, I'll extend my hand to shake and I say, Mr. Jackson, we have much to deliberate. And I'll open 
the palm specifically to him. Okay. As you open the palm and he, he saw you right on it. He knew, he knows it's coming. Um, he reaches down to it, but kind of just grabs your wrist and brings it up in a very, he does not seem to, he feels, he clearly feels secure and safe. He reaches down, just grabs your wrist and just rings up your hand to his hand, his, uh, his eye level and just holds it and takes a moment to read it. Afterward, he unfurls, uh, he unfurls the, his grip, shakes your hand and, uh, looks at the three of you. I have a rather busy night to attend to. Please, I appreciate your uh, I appreciate your time and your business. But if the three of you would please leave. Of course. <clears throat> Ava nods and gets up. Okay. Three of you make your way up the stairs. Uh, out, outside the door on the, at the front, the lady with the bun is waiting for you. She smiles. Business done then. Yep. Please follow Everything me. Everything taken care of. And she walks out... Uh, she walks you back out to the parking garage, the parking deck where the car is still running and waiting. She opens the side door and ushers the three of you in. Ava just pleasantly smiling and kind of cups her dress under her knees and yep. you know scoots in all the way to the side. And then her Dakota, yeah. Ollie, <laughs> as the car kind of weighs down as the three of you sit in, the doors are shut. She makes her way into the passenger seat. She smiles with all three of you and then presses a button in the window. Rides up, rises up. And the car begins to drive off. Do the three of you say anything to each other? Oh, wait. Oh, not in we'll his wait. car. <laughs> yeah, wait till we get back to our haven. Oh, yeah. It'll oh, be wait. a quiet ride back, I, I imagine. We're all just kind of sitting. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I realize immediately... you're not going back home. At what point does it become clear to you oh, three that you're uh, not should I roll for this? I will roll to see yeah, if we're not going awareness. the right way. I oh, know give me a wits awareness. Give me a wits okay. awareness. Okay. Oh. Can I use streetwise instead? I don't, I don't think Ollie would know this. Yeah. Wits streetwise for you? Ollie's just kind of like zoned out right yeah, now. Yeah, Ollie, Ollie's playing it back like, was he upset? Like, did, he, did he have a look? <laughs> He's trying to place it. Like, he needs to know if he's got to, like, go, like, get ready for, like, potence or some shit, man. I've got to... Okay, so Dakota reaches over, grabs a piece of ice out of this champagne bucket, and immediately washes Ollie's hand clean. Okay, yep. That's like, fine. get all the ink off of it. I get the um, champagne. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're like, As Ollie's wash sitting there, that and he's, like, hand. disassociating, and he's, like, thinking yeah. and thinking, lost in his own mind. Yeah, D uh, Dakota grabs I it, and you just feel the cold ice. Three. Yep. three. And, uh, Ava, can I get a wits awareness from you if you're paying attention? Yes, I... I was just saying. Um, Ava might notice this. Let's see. Okay. Ava, yep. Ava and Dakota, you both realize like you're not heading, you're not heading back. For one, Ava, you just you know downtown Chicago. You yeah. know the streets you have to take. For Dakota, it's more that you don't, you're not uh, seeing familiar markings as you kind of leave the outside of the city because you're you're familiar with downtown, but you stay in the boat for the most part. When you what? leave the outskirts of downtown just a bit, these aren't the streets this you're familiar with or the people that you're familiar with. Or the, you've never seen that graffiti. You're not, this, you're not, this, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Dakota immediately, so, this you're going is north. Our, we're, we're not headed south. We're going north. Yeah, as, as, as Ava looks around. Jackson's compound. Toward. Uh, Jackson's compound is uh, east, northeast from downtown. No, we're headed towards the ivory tower, aren't we? Are we headed towards, uh, like, Technically, the ivory tower is north, yes. North, what else is north? I don't know, but we're not uh, headed. Malkavian territory, Bruja territory we're is all not north. We're um, Northeast, <laughs> Cretius is, right, is, right. is north. Um, uh, to the northeast is the Royal Feeding Grounds. Um, so. Uh, so we could be going anywhere at this point. I, I could tink, be going tink, anywhere. Tink, I take take the window. Just like, think, think. Uh, you are ignored. Fuck. Uh, well, it's Jackson's I, ride. So. I take my nail and start like. Down the glass into yeah, some butt. You are ignored. God. All right, everybody just say, I'm just like, it was like, all right, it's fine. We're in Jackson's vehicle. Okay. We're going somewhere he wants us to be going. Just prepare for the worst. Hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. <laughs> That's reassuring. Thank Ava's you, Ava's telling me to chill. Ollie's telling me to prepare for the worst. I. <laughs> it's Where you're driven is far north, somewhere between Malkavian and Bruja territory. You're not entirely sure where you fall because you're not familiar with this area of town. You're somewhere by the Gold Coast, ho, however, and, and Dakota is relatively familiar with the Gold Coast. The Gold Coast for, uh, usually falls firmly into Bruja territory, but there is some parts of it that are just a couple of Malkavians have some some domain there and a couple of Bruja have some domain there. Um, but you are brought somewhere in between before you're a small little out of the way like uh, IT shop 
is where the car pulls in front of. It's like a mom and pop's computer shop. In the windows themselves, you see monitors kind of like haphazardly stacked and wires and motherboards kind of piled up. And the doors themselves and everything looks dark and closed up in there. The car rolls to a stop, but the engine doesn't turn off. And you can hear their passenger side door gently open as her two feet hit the, hit the asphalt, shuts the door and then opens the door to, uh, I met Ava, the Ava side, because she scooted in all the way. So she would be the one near the sidewalk. And she opens up as she steps up on the sidewalk and she says, if you'll follow me. Um, happy to, but uh, if, if you wouldn't mind, um, this isn't our haven. Oh, I am aware. Thank you, though. Um, might I ask where we're being led to? <laughs> where Mr. Jackson would like you. I see. Dakota gets a wicked <clears throat> grin, a wicked <laughs> grin comes across her face, and I, I scoot over Ava's lap, and I'm first out the car. God damn it. I'm like, all right, fine. <laughs> wow, okay, Dakota just like crawls uh, over yeah, Ava. Yeah, I get, I get out, I'm like, all right. I'm interested. <clears throat> I can offer a hand you, to Ollie. Ava. <laughs> Ava take it no, Ava no after out. you, Ollie, you can go first. I'll, I'll go last. It's fine. All right. <laughs> and then Ollie steps out. Ollie steps out and the woman with the bun shuts the door. She taps on the trunk a couple times in the car. Rolls off. Sorry, I got a hiccup attack out of nowhere. Bear with me. I'm getting through them. Promise. <laughs> I don't know why it happens. Like Jackson's that. been drinking. <laughs> After that know. news, maybe. <laughs> the car rolls off and she walks up to the front door of the IT store. She reaches into her pocket and pulls out a single key. It slides into the lock and you can hear the, do the door unlock. And uh, as she pulls the key back out and pockets it, she pulls it and a little bell jingles at the very top. As she slides it all the way open, she gestures for the three of you to walk in. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, Dakota, <laughs> for safety purposes, we'll also be the first one through. Like, she's not Dakota walks Ava in, go followed by Ava, followed by Ollie. And as you walk in, it is a mom and pop shop. It is filled with computers in mid repair. Some of them in from like early 2000s. You see a couple of like uh, gateways and a couple of alien wares from like the early to mid uh, 2010s, um, as well as a couple of retro PCs being tinkered on and worked on. She kind of steps over a few things and she looks kind of bothered. She's got her lip kind of brought up in a disgusted look. And she's like, oh, this place is always, I apologize. It's not meant for, um, proper business and she just kind of giggles when she says that and she starts when you say proper over. business you mean like she, she laughs she's like just come on come along and she just brings you to the back do you follow uh yeah, yeah. Uh, Ava but does Jackson own this place or is this um mm -hmm. oh okay. she just, she's like climbing over like a pile like a pc tower okay eventually she gets to the back of the room and she actually clears out a cardboard box with like parts in the side of it and wires hanging out, you know, like in and out, uh, input and output, keyboards hanging out, mouses. She drags a few and shoves them. And on the, on the floor, in the rug, there's a clearly cut uh, thin line that's a square. She reaches down and she actually has a, she pulls out of her 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 shoe, a small metallic, like, you, you would consider it like a, a, a shoe slide. You know, those old shoe slides for like, you know, like for your heel to get in, kind of looks like that. Oh, yeah, 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 thing. yeah, yeah. Yeah, shoehorn, yeah. And she actually yeah. jams it under the rug and whittles it in there for a little bit. And she can, you can actually hear her struggling. And she's like, hang on, I almost got it. And she what, can, puts I, a, uh, can I help She you? just puts her hand up like, no, I'm good. And okay. after a couple tugs, she can hear the wood underneath kind of crack and creak. And as it does so, you actually see a little bit of light come out of a crack and now you can see the color of the the really worn down rug in this area what bits of rug are actually shown is this gross mix of like a dark blue and lots of brown spots kind of scattered across lots of crumbs also mixed in as if you could if you dragged your hand across the this rug like crumbs would flick up you know that kind of mess uh and uh she, she as the wood cracks and the uh, the light floods in she gets her hand under there and she kind of yeah, pushes it all the way up with a loud creak and crack and there's a wooden ladder that's attached to it that she then unhinges and it shoom, slides on the all the way down. I like <sighs> look to the other two, like. <laughs> if you weren't sure before, as she takes like a deep breath, it shows that she's mortal. Um, and she's like, sorry about that. Yeah, make your way down. Jackson should join you shortly. <sighs> okay. All right, swanky. <laughs> you make your way down? You know what? We came to him tonight knowing we might die. Uh, I'm fine. Uh, you know uh, what? Fuck it. Uh, if I'm going to die in the cellar of a computer store. What better company, <laughs> right? Yeah, what better company? Yeah. yeah. We are the loud ones after all. That's Cheers, true. Jackson. Way to scare a gangrel. 
as you make your way down first, Dakota, I'm imagining again, just eager, yeah. just like, fuck it, I'm going in, Ava, and then Ollie. Um, the ladder, uh, she then reaches down and slides the ladder up and connects it back to the, the clearly kind of made trap door. You're in a very relatively small, we'll say it's like 20 feet by 10 feet, much more like a rectangle, uh, concrete basement that, then if you have any, any specialty in like architecture in any way, or any knowledge in like architecture to tell I this basement has been around since. I have interior design, but that, I don't know if that would. She would be like, that's chair railing. That applies. But not architecture now. Regardless though, the only things down here in this room, are, other than the concrete walls and floor as the door shuts on uh, uh, above you and you can hear some boxes being slid on top of them. Um, you look around and it is, exceptionally well lit. One, the very first thing you notice, there are lights that cover every corner, down to other corners, through other areas and, and the like. He Moreover, knows, there knows is something. there is also a couch over, slid over into a corner, a small table next to it, and then a couple of chairs that are scattershot, not really belonging to anything. They don't look expensive. They look old and worn. Um, other than that, though, the walls themselves are completely bare. There's nothing on the walls, nothing on the floor. It is simply chairs. And that's it. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Just looking at this space, does this look like... It, are are there traces of blood and... What's uh, awareness? What's awareness? You don't see any obvious traces of blood anywhere. I think Ollie would immediately say. Can I? I think he, I think he already knows. Look at the lights. Yep. There's not a dark corner in this whole fucking room. <sighs> You're right. I got a two. Yeah. If you want to stick with that, do you want to reroll two or are you good? Uh, you know what? I got nothing but time. Sure. Uh, Your willpower, uh, though. <laughs> that only re recharges, what, half every every session? Okay, uh, just two. Nope, just Looks two. thick and span. Looks incredibly clean. I think you might be right. We might have just opened a big old fat can of worms. <laughs> Looks like he was already preparing for something. Dakota looks like a kid waiting to get into Disney. <laughs> I'm, uh, I am take I take a chair. I spin it around backwards. I have a seat. I know this sort of advanced a timeline a lot, but uh, it felt like it was the time. Oh, hey, no one's no mad. Complaints. No complaints from me. It's like, it's fine. I think uh, the the minute we realized that. Or the minute he realized it was beyond giving him a seat on the council. He knew. That's, he knew. Well, he knew there was something. We're either here to meet the wrong end of Jackson's power, or we're either here to meet the right end of it. So, uh, while we're waiting, Ava wants to do a little investigating on this room. Okay. You want to go ahead and make a wits awareness or uh, a wits, um, can or I, wits intelligence or wits can investigation? I, use some aspects maybe what would you like to use um either premonition or perhaps a spirit's touch uh well each one serve wildly different purpose so i'm curious which one you'd like to use let's yeah. take a look premonition obviously we know what that does level two power force yourself to see something you have a wall you can touch and a couple of chairs and a couch um and if you want to use uh, the other one which is a uh, spirit's touch let's see it's a rouse check you touch an inanimate object on the ground or the ground at a location the vampire can sense the emotional residue left by those who have handled that object or visited the location the user gains insight into not only that person but also what was done and under what circumstances while rarely crystal clear the information often provides leads impossible to gain from regular forensics and deduction so you can literally touch the ground and, and Try and feel the emotions of the people who have used this room and try and kind of figure out what happened. I mean, it's am a level curious. four. It's a level four one. It's pretty powerful. You're gonna I am curious like what the, the background is behind this room. So okay. I, I think I'll I'll give it a shot. Um so I'll rouse check. Okay. You're gonna rouse check. And I get a little hungry. Okay, you're a little hungrier. And you're gonna make me an intelligence aspects roll. All right, so let's see what we get here. With three, three successes yes. and you can re-roll three. Um yeah, let's go ahead and use that willpower. Oh, jeez. Nice. Wow. Worth Six it. Successes. Six Worth successes. Six successes. Okay. 
So what we watch as Ava kind of steps to the center of the room. Dakota is scouring and just looking around, kind of running her hand across the wall, looking to see if there's any blood splots anywhere. Ollie's kind of standing in the center and taking it all in. He's like, I think he knows. I think he knows. Uh, as the lights kind of beam around. And Ava, as she agrees, and is like, yeah, I think you're right. You see her actually kind of just pull up her sleeve, drop down to a knee, and she just places her fingertips gently on the cold concrete ground. And as you do so, Ava, you're kind of whipped away. Now, when you've used other, uh, when you use premonition and stuff, um, usually brought into a vision or you see some sort of murkiness. Here, you're not, you don't really see anything. Instead, as you close your eyes, do you, you, you know that feeling when you get really excited or really nervous about something, that, that welling up almost like you're on a roller coaster ride and it's just hard to control as it hits your chest? It's like that, except other emotions. They well through the center where your beast may even constantly remind you that it resides, whether it's actually there or not. And those emotions ripple from the core outward. You can actually watch Ollie and, and Dakota as her face changes from one of concern to a serious look to even one of slight fear. There's a lot running through Dakota, a lot running rather through Ava uh, right now. Now, while you're, like I said, the, the, the information that you get from this place is ra uh, very unoften crystal clear. The things that kind of run through you here, Ava, the, the feelings that run through, fear <clears throat> is one. There is a sense of, uh, 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 of uh, kind of like this guttural dread, not this overt I, a fear frenzy type thing, but this constant feeling of like somebody's watching you. There's somebody over your shoulder watching you. Um, whether you kind of attribute that to something like you were when you were Sybil or something entirely different, I mean, that feeling can mean any number of things. But as the fear kind of wells up, it quickly is overtaken by anger. You can feel an, a burning anger and almost... You're not sure if you want to use the word hatred or not. It's hard to know, but it is unpleasant and one that brings aggressive feelings. And then the only other feeling that kind of rises after that is a calm. You just feel a calm after the anger, but the anger certainly is the feeling that lingers the longest. And that's what you see, Ollie and Dakota, as she kind of goes from this scared look to a determined, uh, you know, furrowed brow to a, a lax face. And all of that happens in the course of three seconds. It's only around and around is three seconds in VTM. So that's how quick she's able to, she touches the ground and she's just like, <sighs> and then her fingers come back up and she's, you okay? <clears throat> yeah, I was trying to get a sense for this place and and get the the vibes of it. It's the main feeling that I feel here is anger, like an aggressive. <laughs> I relate with that. <sighs> this place was made for some sort of some sort of anger or dread. The floor's concrete? Yep. Is there a drain? Nope. Which means if there was blood, they had to have scrubbed that shit by they, hand. They scrubbed it by hand, yeah. Which may tell Dakota maybe there isn't, this isn't a place of violence necessarily. Yeah, this wouldn't have been the, this wouldn't have been the place she would have brought somebody. Yeah, there, not somebody can't clean this place up, yeah. Yeah. Well, there are lots of different kinds of anger. At first, it felt like almost a paranoia, always being watched. <clears throat> Preceded by a feeling of dread, and then and then suddenly calm. You all sit around and kind of just take it in, realizing, well, you're gonna have to wait one way or another. It isn't actually all that long that you're left here before you hear the sounds of upstairs, footsteps, multiple footsteps, some conversation between a few different voices, and then eventually footsteps leading over to above you and then over to where the door is before you hear the moving of boxes again. And you hear eventually the door, the wood door creak open as your own light floods upward. And as it pulls up all the way, you see a few figures looking in, but a familiar one amongst all of them is Mr. Jackson as he unhinges the ladder and he begins to climb his way down, still in his fine attire, purple shirt, black suit, and perfectly white gloves. He climbs down all the way in the ladder, as does two others that follow him, a man and a woman. As they climb down as well, he pushes the ladder up, and as you actually look up, you can see the blonde-headed bun woman actually peer over the edge and latch it before she shuts it, and you hear some uh, more shuffling as things are placed on top. 
He looks to the two, to the three of you before uh, he just looks at the two that followed him. They stand behind him and stand in different corners. You very clearly, and they don't do it aggressively necessarily, but you watch as they each pull out a stake and a pistol. He stands forward as he crosses his fingers and kind of stands at a lax, uh, kind of a lax position. Doesn't look aggressive, is always going to take anything from you or uh, try and rip your throat out or anything. He just looks calmly at each one of you. Details. Well, where do we start? Ten years ago, I delivered a box to the prince. Upon her request, inside of it was a shadow. Once released, somehow she was connected, attached to it. We believe it's a Methuselah. Chinatown has been closed off for a while now. We're also in belief that it sleeps beneath that area and that Bella is being controlled. There is a much darker plan. Is that all you know then? <laughs> That's the quick and dirty. He nods. Did it look like Ava or Ollie was also going to say something or no? Mm. Ollie's waiting. Ollie wants to see the intentions of those. Mm, yeah, Ava's going to wait and see if he has any other questions. Okay. Um, well, if he's kind of the silence, he, he looks to you. All of those are very deep, serious allegations. They're not allegations, Mr. Jackson. They're the truth. I need to ensure that. I've seen it. I do need to ensure it. However, you understand. And how would you like us to prove it to you? I am going to pull the truth from you. Dakota steps up, gets out of the chair, turns it, kind of slings it off to the side. Okay. As as you kind of eagerly slide off and step to the side, um, you watch, you, uh, give me a, a wit's insight check, all three of you, as you watch Dakota very eagerly stand forward. I only got one. That's fine. Two. Two. hey -o. hey -o. Oh, wow. Four. Well, poor um, action. Four. Ollie's the only one that noticed, and maybe it's because Ollie has been dealing with people like him for a long time. The way he carries himself, this businessman outside on the outside, murderous intent on the inside, that mafia, the way he carries himself. It's very reminiscent. But you watch as she eagerly slides the chair forward and steps up without even a hesitation. Like Dakota did not even let a beat pass. And there is genuine impression. Like an, he looks genuinely impressed. His facial features lighten, his eyes widen a bit. And he looks just directly down at her, not surprised or taken aback, but genuine and genuinely impressed. That's the only thing. That's what Ollie picks up. It's a little hard for the others to pick up because there's only a lot need happening. Only from one right of now. us, right? He shakes his head. I would need to verify your story is true amongst the three of you. This is going to be a problem. I, I look, look to the other two. I, I Ava looks concerned because of Why don't you history. start by verifying that first? Because once you can verify that those things are true, there's a whole lot of other worms that can come out of this. Let's, uh, let's start with me, shall we? And then maybe you'll be more interested in what you're gonna find from everybody else. Now, are you willingly allowing him to do this? Are you gonna resist? No. Just pure... He looks to you, he demands information, and you will. Yeah. Uh, like, if, if he if he uses Dominate, rather, as a level four or five ability or whatnot. I mean, she'll tell him he doesn't have to, because she's going to tell him the truth anyways. Absolutely. But he, he needs it for, for his va uh, validation. Nope, I just need to check something real quick, because I just want to make sure when I do this, I'm doing it correctly. Dakota knows how this works. Yep. Oh, I know. You've been through this before. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, forgetful mind specifically. Um, mm -hmm. But I just want to make sure I'm pulling <clears throat> things here. Uh... Okay, so I would need to do something like four, five. Uh, 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 let me check something because he might not want to do that. Sorry, I just want to make That's sure I'm right. not I'm not going past. I, I just I'm thinking in his head and how he would want to do this because there is a trust amongst the three, the four of you. So if he, if he doesn't necessarily have to pull the truth from you, 
in a in such a kind of extravagant way, he will. But Dakota also recognizes this is kind of like a do or die type situation, which oh, yeah, means of her feels ab- around dominate. In I'm just saying, there's anything in, in, in um presence that he might rather use uh, instead. R- oh, I see what you mean. So that yeah. it, uh, instead of like ripping your thing. mind open and taking yep. it, and, he, and see if there's a, a more gentle way of of doing it. Oh, with all of Dakota you. actually might be rather impressed by that choice. Let me just see. Um... <laughs> Oh, Jackson is a get straight to business, man. Yeah, he is a very straight to business mm-hmm. individual. Well, I mean, you came to him with um, some rather bombastic uh, claims. Yes, well. it's very alarming, I understand. I mean, no. like I said, Dakota Dakota knows uh, what we were getting into when we came down into his scary possible, uh, you know, torture basement. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not that bad when you got down here, though. No. Just because they might have scrubbed the floors clean don't mean he ain't done some crazy stuff in this basement. Because yes. knows what a basement like this is made for so that nobody hears you. I was going to say, at least we know we're safe from others. It's true. That's it's right. true. It, it, yep. Regardless of what you do, it's made so that nobody hears you. I yeah. think the way this is going to happen, because he, I just, I'm sorry. I know I'm flipping through a lot of pages here, but I want to make right. sure I get everything right so I don't accidentally fuck this up. Because there is something I want to make sure he that is going to happen, or at least he tries to make happen. We'll see. Oh, man. There it is. This is... What for. Hello, sir. Let me look at this your abilities real quick. I'm excited, actually. Show us what you got, Jackson. Uh, uh, as you step <laughs> forward, he uh, he simply, like I said, he looks impressed as he looks down to Dakota, uh, Ollie, as you catch that. But he asks, he, he looks to you one more time in the eyes, and he just simply says to you, is there anything you need to tell me now? that you may reveal under the influence of some other supernatural abilities. My taste for the sheriff is distasteful. I think he already, I was gonna say, Ava just, yeah, also, I think he already knew that, Dakota. (laughs) He chuckles. (laughs) I've made it a personal mission to assure that his life is, well, problematic. He nods and he turns around to uh, the the young man behind him. Uh, please, go fetch him. He reaches up and bangs on the on the ceiling with his uh like he reaches like a stick or something. He just bangs on it a couple times. Eventually, it gets moved and he climbs up. A few minutes pass and before uh, there's this silence amongst the the four of you down there before you hear footsteps return. Same young man makes his way back down, but following suit is actually all Alan Sovereign. Uh- he oh, climbs great. his way downstairs. I guess Alan's on this too. <laughs> Shit. He turns and he kind of adjusts his glasses um, before he looks over to, to Mr. Jackson. And uh, Mr. Jackson just kind of ushers him to stand next to him. I want you to ask Dakota what she knows. A name if you can. He just gives a nod as he pulls his glasses off and cleans them. Miss Rain, I will make this as quick as possible. I apologize, it won't be exactly pleasant. On life, is it? He gives you just a kind of a smile. Well then, he kind of adjusts a bit and da- stares deeply into your eyes. And since you're not going to resist, there will be no rolls. He looks and he simply says to you, do you know the name of the Methuselah? Sybil. He actually looks over to, to Jackson and he nods. He thinks for a moment, rubs his chin. Ask her how long they've known. Sovereign turns to you and looks you in the eyes, and once again, he's rouse checking every time. A decade. You. you say a decade? He looks to you and asks you either way. How long have you known? And then you say a decade again. Not roughly 10 years. The uh, then Mr. Jackson again, do ask them if they know the clan. She uh, um, Alan looks to you, ask the question What clan is the Methuselah? The Sumra. There's a, 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 a quiet again as Sovereign turns to Mr. Jackson, and Mr. Jackson simply puts his hand on his, Mr. Sovereign's shoulder. You've exerted yourself enough tonight, friend. Thank you. Sovereign nods. They look to, to the guards, and again, a banging happens as the door opens, and 
the ladder slides down and Sovereign climbs his way out before it's pulled and shut. You satisfying? About as well as I can be, I suppose. But you do bring me interesting proposition. We didn't serve because we wanted to, Mr. Jackson. We serve because of the threats that follow. And it runs deeper than just us. There are many that are above us, that are on even the council, that are aware of this. But not many. But not many, exactly. And when they do find out, they're usually killed. Said unnatural rise to power. Bella, no. Bella's the lead puppet. Ah, so the box you gave her then. I didn't know. I imagine not. He walks over past you, sits in uh, one of the chairs and crosses his leg over his other, leans back. Sit, let's talk. As he gestures okay. for the three of you to sit, and as you all take a seat or perhaps stand, I know we're 15 minutes early, but let's break mm -hmm. here. And as we pick up in the after break, we will uh, pick up with conversation and see what exactly is worked out between Mr. Jackson and the Coterie, how much their trust now lies. Woo, y'all, this went from zero to 11. <laughs> oh, just, yeah, it did. Just earlier today, I was all upset about bass, and now we're spilling the beans to Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> right? All right. Oh we'll be back in a few minutes or, or however it is, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be back then. We'll see you in a little bit.
hello everybody welcome back from our break we're excited to con continue on um so we will actually just pick up there we'll reset the scene as the camera fades back in we're greeted with that solid concrete room walls floor smoothless and seamless no drain sits in any corner no stain splatters any floor the lights in this area light every corner uh, ensuring no shadow hits anywhere and as he uh, as mr allen was brought down to question you through the abilities of dominate you willingly gave information first and was clarified thereafter with the dominate and now mr jackson having taken all in took one of the seats in a nearby chair and gestured for the three of you to sit down so that you may discuss he seems to trust the other two guards that sit in here as all these questions are openly asked in front of them. And they stand quietly, still armed with a stake in hand as well, but not looking or uh, looking at either of you and standing just at attention. Do all three of you take a seat mm. amongst Mr. Jackson or does Ollie tends to stand, which is why I ask? I will stand. If Thank he you. says sit, I, I'll, I'll grab a chair. I'll grab the same I'll chair. Okay. I'll sit as well. And does, uh, does Ava take the couch? bringing her uh, yeah. legs up and stretching out a little bit since uh, Ollie's going to stand kind of around. Lounge. Give us a good lounge. lounge. Oh, <laughs> more comfortable than uh, the rest. <laughs> Forgive my apprehension, Mr. Jackson. Sitting's not exactly my style. Nothing to forgive you for. I do not take any offense. You bring me information that changes the course of everything I thought I knew about my own city. It's power structure puppets and puppet masters and ancient ones. Chinatown makes a little bit more sense now, at least immediately, if that's what's happening. But how did you all come into this information? I understand, as he gestures over to Dakota, that you transported a box with a shadow inside. It makes more sense why Bella brought in the Lasombra, though the Camarilla seem eager to continue that across other cities. Mr. Jackson, we're the prodigal children. Delusions of grandeur. My apologies, Mr. Hopkins, but I don't recall who any of your sires are beyond Siana. That's the point. That was the point. My sire. Just a little history. Give it to you quick and dirty. Did you... Hmm. Have you ever met Rudy? Rudy's a La Sombra. Real ugly bastard. Sticks to the shadows. Rudy the Nosferatu. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Same guy. It was all a joke. Rudy's a La Sombra. And There's some sort of bizarre testing or changes or something that happened to him. And Snitch took him in. Taught him how to be a Nas. Look, act, play the part. So he performatively acted as such, and he was supposed to be my Mala. If you wouldn't mind for a moment, and allow me to interrupt before we move past something rather... Well, it raises a flag. Rudy the Nosferatu. Or, um, my apologies now. La Sombra, as you so claim. Some... There are clans out there that can change the shape of another figure. Yeah. To my knowledge, there's not a single one that belonged to the Camarilla, at least here in Chicago. Are you aware of a kindred here in Chicago that can do that? We caught wind. We brought it to the Prince. About a decade back. Remember Mark's bar, the two of you? Remember the ghouls? We were told they were called war ghouls. Under the bar, the three misshapen body horror men with the strength of definitely, definitely a kindred, much like a Nas. He nods as you as you describe all of this. Yes, you speak of the abominations created by the old clan. We burned them. The whole bar burned down. Ah. Understood. No. Like the orphanage. Yeah. 
I am aware of the or- orphanage incident in its, unne- in its unfortunate necessity. To keep you understand? Chicago safe. Safe. Safe? Was it to keep Chicago safe or to keep a secret safe, Mr. Jackson? The orphanage was a breeding ground for young SI. Oh, uh, yeah. What you didn't find out was that while we were supposed to bomb, that SI stopped. The previous prince, Maxwell, was in parts, living at the end of his life in the basement being tortured. He didn't head east. He was there. True. And we didn't know until it was well, well past, way too late. We were used by the prince to instill yeah. a plan to seat her. Yet again. From start to finish. From my bond to the horrible things that she's made Ava do. To the controlling of my son. Correct. I so, apologize if I lack empathy, but many a prince over many a decade operate in such ways, while I may not agree with it personally. We're not here for your empathy. We're here to answer your questions and hopefully make clear that choice has been well, a difficult word to use in terms of what we have had. Hopefully our intentions are clear here as well. Then I hope for the first time I can offer you true choice. Me too. And so your plan is to remove Bella because she is a threat. What is... And what if Bella's puppet master is removed, but Bella is not? Then how? Would you still wish to overthrow her then? Or is the threat that beyond the pale? Mr. Jackson, I don't mean to bring you some sort of world-ending news here, but there's something quite a bit more at stake in the seat of the prince. You're familiar with the Lissambra. I'm sure you've heard some of the older tales. I'm gonna toss out some words, see where it lands with you. Eternal Night? Yeah, well, we think that we've uncovered that. That is our biggest concern. Fact. We have confirmed that Bella is working with a series of Fae out of a place called Madison, not far from here. The Abyss. They feed from it. Here. It leaks into through. everything. Bella has moved a new player into town. Uh, your friend, the well-dressed black hole. What is his name? Um, Vitel. 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 Thank you, Ollie. Marcus Vitel. Yes. Yes, from He's Washington, from I believe. Yes, he's in Chicago. Yes. And yes, he is here. Ava was his personal concierge for a few nights because she had to. Real talker, wasn't he, Ava? <laughs> Talking. My apologies for interrupting again, but we're muttering, muddying two separate problems. You wish to replace Bella in talk Mr. of unseating a prince. Mr. Jackson, we would much rather see you in the seat of prince ruling Chicago the way that it's supposed to be, but I think this takes precedence. That is what I was getting to. The removal of Debella as prince and the political power shifts here in Chicago. Meaningless, aren't they? Not if this Methuselah is truly sleeping beneath the city. So the removal of Bella would have to come after her when her influence has been removed. Yes. Wouldn't such a thing be compromising enough to have her removed? Absolutely. But I wouldn't suggest trying to move her out of her seat so quickly. Oh no. That wasn't ever the plan. I want to see her slowly. Hence the reason we did not tell you this information so immediately as 
we are moving rather slowly with this. The plan, as we said, was to give you a position on the council as a Ventru. We weren't going to immediately usurp the position of Prince. We do know that this is a delicate situation and we need to take our time. And once I've sat on the council, we are looking at a, a timeline of years before we can make a move on Sybil, you said it was. That is her name. This is not something that can be taken care of within a year. Methuselah is something that could destroy this entire city. Yes. It is going to take multiple armies to fight that front. As for Bella, we need to weaken her position. The council needs to start doubting her for normal reasons, so that when it comes out that she's working for a Methuselah, then yes, they have it's... no reason not to. And... And that leads you to why you told me about McTavish, isn't it? Yes. Roundabout way, yeah. <clears throat> One. It's been a slow creep to, be able to make her look bad. Really, the only things we have are her... Her... Un... Her un unstable sheriff and this incident. Yeah, Let's call it what it is. He is compromised. <clears throat> Contract yes. made with a fae mm. to ruin something. his reputation. He, he kind of nods at something I'm rather unfamiliar with, I do have to admit, at least on the surface level. Not fae or contracts. The Fae. It's honestly confusing to all of us. But it's a lot less whimsical than you might think. But impressive. Yes, Maneuver. well. We've been doing our research for many years now. Bella currently sits in a position of luxury. The Anarchs are, through the Council and all those in official positions, all but wiped out their threat minimized. Whispers of McTavish are fresh, and only a few of us have heard those names, and we do what we can to keep those whispers minimal. Not enough knowledge on who he is and what he wants. Causing panic amongst higher ranks would do us no good, but now that I know, I think I'll continue that. I say let him hit the camera. Let's see what shakes out of it. We've been peaceful for, what, 10 years? Is Bella really ready for war? <laughs> no. I can secure myself in case he attempts an attack on me, but I have that knowledge. My havens will be fortified and prepared. I've asked for a word with him. Maybe I mean, he'll shake up. And he hasn't replied then, I take it. Not yet. So we let him do what he's going to do. And suddenly, Bella is no longer in that such pristine, luxurious position. Anarch peace would be a facade, and some trust may be rocked, depending on what happens. Then we make our push. The council isn't full, and it hasn't been for about a month now. Leaving empty seats leaves security breaches. And so I heard true. we're down a hound. Two, in fact. Oops. A good word for Damien would do well for him. I wish that I had good words with the prince anymore. <laughs> he merely smiles. Perhaps you're having them now. Perhaps. Damien already mentioned his interest in Hound. Unfortunately, you have to serve under the piece of shit known as Hodges. Understood. I didn't have a thing against Hodges, at least not for a while. I recognize that he's a being a bit manipulated. I empathize with that. 
So, our immediate moves are already apparent then. We let time play out and see what happens. When McTavish makes his move and we understand the damage done, or perhaps no damage done, we can still make an attempt. How confident are you that McTavish will be successful in his attempts? Are you even aware? Very. I don't know what his attempts are going to be, but a man like McTavish... He has nothing to stop him at this point. Nobody knows where he is. Nobody knows what he's doing. There's nothing to lose and everything to gain. Correct. And they think the Anarchs are weak. It's the perfect Hello. time to attack. Yes, they... The confidence... <laughs> Bella's ego that it too. unseats her on a pretty regular basis. Despite her shadow, she's still a Toreador at heart. I apologize. I've lost myself in thought. Planning. Planning. Well, I've asked you plenty. I'd be rude not to open up the table the other way. You have my attention. I... I don't have... some freedoms. We've been so far pushed under. We've had dick for freedom for so long. Constantly reminded. Constantly reminded. From being blood-bound, controlled, then tossed away. Having my son held above me. Ava... Has had to eat people, not blood, people. She watched her mother die. She watched her brother die. We lost not a co member. Not just any. I don't. You, you're missing some of the details here. You remember Crowley? Yes. Crowley was with us. Did you hear the brief news about Zach coming back? There were whispers, but I never saw hide nor hair of the man. Zach came back for about, well, what was it? A day? Two days? No more than a week? Zach came back because Sybil had the power to change the man who was Crowley, returning the soul of Zach into the body of Crowley, and it changed his body back. And then she took him as a reminder of her constant ebb and flow of power. She might be sleeping, but it's not stopping her. Those that sleep are not bereft of influence. Mr. Jackson. Yes. I don't need to tell you this. I know that you will treat this information with the utmost security and care. Our friend, your fellow Ventru, Camille, she was not so lucky when she found out this information. Her disappearance was because she found out about Sybil. There is no exile. She's no longer wandering, Mr. Jackson. Cammy is dead. Well, that does bother me. It is also unsurprising knowing what I know now. You are all still alive, however. And you know so much. Because we're part of her game plan as well. For the record, our allegiance is constantly tested. Ava's in particular. She didn't go missing because she was killed. She wasn't decapitated and burned. Bella forced her to diablerize Camille. Either that or she would die herself. He, uh, when you say that, he look, she looks over to Ava and he gazes into her eyes. Yes, I can... I can see that now. Ava's eyes kind of look down somberly at this. She doesn't make eye contact with Jackson. My interests are rather personal. I really want to see Hodges beg for his life as a cherry on my ice cream. But really, I just... After all the loyalty that we've shown Bella, when I finally asked for something... 
I just want the gang girl to be able to come and go from this city. You have made that clear to me before. Then I'll make it clear again, so that there is nothing but transparency between us. And that is appreciated. Something the Camarilla old guard seemed to lack. While I appreciate the security and the way they do things to a certain extent, I agree. Modernization is important. Technology is unavoidable, for instance. To completely disregard it, I think is a mistake. Mere example. Small one. So then what? Our next moves are to wait, no? Wait for McTavish to attack. I have a feeling it'll be big, and it's gonna be flashy. And it sounds like you rise to, uh, Primogen will be the following move. I expect Bella to resist, but the support of the council should be easy to muster after such an attack. And, um, I don't work for Bella anymore, but she does take my word to heart on the rare occasion. Maybe Ava and I can put in a good word for Damien. She's down to one now. And she knows that her sheriff is compromised, regardless of whether or not she wants to believe it. Or if she fucking cares. An attack of the size that you're, you're describing will certainly shake and crack the foundation that she's built. A facade. A believable uh, one, however. Yep. It seemed a little too good to be true, so... We felt now was a good time to speak with you about it. Well, and he stands. Oh, Ava, please, as he stands, Ava. I was, yeah, go ahead, so I, to speak. I just want to be free of this bond that we have with the prince and Sybil. We can achieve that with your help. He then, uh, as he finishes standing, when you, when you say that and looks to the three of you, um, he actually just extends his hand to shake Dakota's first, then, uh, cause she's, she's closest, then kind of going down. And he simply, to, as he's shaking all of your hands, he simply looks to each of you and just simply says, to a new partnership, then. To a new partnership. And great success in the decades to come. Let us hope. He smiles with his bright white teeth and a uh, genuine grin as he turns, uh, after he shakes each of your hands and he turns to the others and they, uh, push the, the trap door open after they give a couple bangs and they can hear the boxes move out of the way and the ladder drops down. He leaves first, followed by his two guards, leaving the three of you behind to leave at your own pace. But you definitely hear more than just three or four people's worth of footsteps upstairs. It sounds like there's at least a handful or more. Do you follow in tow or do you actually hang out here? No, I'm going to wait until they're gone. I was going to say, yeah, we'll wait We're a few minutes. We're never fully left alone because somebody oh, that, needs to shut okay. this place up. <laughs> yeah, that's, so that's okay, but I don't we'll want just like give 12 a few people minutes. upstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. wait until there's like space. less time and then eventually yeah. you actually hear the footsteps of uh, like meek footsteps as a young lady peers over and she's like, are the three of you, I don't mean to rush, but I, we need to close this place up. As, right. As you make your way ready. up um, and, and you kind of climb up, there's still one other person actually standing on the outside. Uh, of this uh, of the IT shop, and as you walk out, um, it would be a wit streetwise check to recognize. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I'm pretty good at that. I imagine Ollie and Dakota have some good pools for this. Hey, oh. three, three, three. Oh. Hey, Ollie, Ollie, Ollie with the tonight. big five, big five. They, good rolls, Ava Ollie. and Dakota. They, de it, you're, you're, you're quite certain they're gang member of some type. They look like they're uniformed in some way, but Ollie, you can actually see the blood markings that he has. Part of the bloods. This guy standing on the outside. Interesting. Guarding the IT shop. He actually, the young lady with the bun gives him a nod as they all walk out, and as you all file out, he walks away. Uh -huh. uh, you're, you, file, you are filed into a car and driven. Very sporadically uh, throughout the the windows, much like last time, um, right. it's hard. You can only kind of notice a little bit of the buildings, but they drive for a while 
to ensure that, you know, if knowing exactly where you are and, and stuff is a bit difficult. And then you're brought back to your movie theater simply because you have no technology. So it's hard to track. Right. Yeah, yeah. But you're dropped off peacefully at your movie theater. Uh, she, she opens the door and allows you out as the night kind of reaches around 1 or 2 a.m. And uh, as she says goodbye to you, she steps into the side passenger seat and doesn't really give you conversation. And the car rolls off quietly, turning the nearest corner. It was a little ironic. See that gang member outside the IT shop? Yeah. He's one of the Bloods. It's a, it's a, it's a blood. thought that was funny. A little poetic. Weird. That's interesting. I I yeah. don't get it. Why? We're, uh, Ava, Ava, we're we're kindred. And they're uh, Ollie. It means the the joke. Uh, I mean, I one. It probably tells us what area of town we were in. Um, gangs are territorial yeah. in nature, usually. So at least we know what area they moved us to and from, uh, potentially. But I'm really interested. That means Jackson has deep criminal contacts. And where there are bloods, there are crips, right? In opposition, most certainly. Correct. And I have a little drunk policeman who's in desperate need of a good... a good gold star. Well... <clears throat> We could, uh, we could head back inside. We could sweat it out for a little bit, build our anxieties, but... That I, one uh, was Star Wars? Uh, I was actually going to see if, if y'all would make some time for something. Of course. All I got is time. You want to go talk to Grant? Grant needs some, uh... About what? He, I've... He, he about some, flipping burgers? No, no. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, look, long long story me. short, um, <laughs> someone came through that was all jacked up. They are going through withdrawals. They needed something. And when I went in, I needed to feed. She was going to be back there a while. <clears throat> and uh, I knew feeding from her that she would probably die. So I gave her some blood in an effort to keep her alive. And when I told Grant that she was going to be back there a couple of days, probably down and out, and she's going to be shaking the withdrawal of whatever's in her system that I had to give her some blood and he had questions. Okay. You know, and I told him that with some time, I should probably educate him a bit more about clans. So he asked the questions. He was like, what is it like secret clubs? Is everybody in clubs? And I, I, long and short of it is he knows what we are, but he doesn't know any of the gritty details. And uh, we're all different in clans respectively. And I told him that if we got some time tonight, we'll sneak back in and give him some, some one-on-one. We're giving him a lesson on kindred clans. Grant's an addict. What's... He's an addict. And every time I give him blood, it fuels that addiction. And I don't, eventually I don't need him doing something stupid because an addict will do anything they can to get blood. Or in this case, the drug he needs. And he was bad, guys. He was bad when he wheeled in there. So what, we're just supposed to pep talk him on kindred lifestyle? I don't know if it's a matter of pep talking, but he he said that I couldn't know what his addiction was like, the things that he would do. And I told him that he has no idea what it's like for us to deal with our beast. Grant's going to go about his ways and he knows enough now that I'll either get oh, killed. Oh, you want us to scare it into him? Our information is by proxy scary. Oh, I agree. I just, I, you know, I'm looking, like, are we good cop, bad copping this? Or I'm like, because I'm going to look at Grant and say, I don't know who the fuck my clan is. I don't have a clan because it has been the Camarilla's job to assure over time that we are dispersed. I don't even know my sire. That bitch dropped me off here and left. Everything well, that I know about kindred life, I've learned on my own, Ollie. Or Look, from a good pat on the head from Bella, the Toreador. I put my, my hands on, on Dakota's shoulders. I would much rather him learn what a kindred is from you, from Ava or myself, as opposed to Boss and Rudy. Yeah, you concerned that he's going to be hanging around Boss if she comes back? 
they seem to... Are you kidding me? Yes. Yes, there's a bear shit in the woods. <laughs> I, yes. Uh, no, I've never met a bear. That's the only place they shit unless they're in captain. Yes, the bear shit in woods. He's going to hang all over her. He's going right. to climb that tree if he can. We need to... We need to give him a boot camp, I see. I'm willing yes. to help. Thank you. I appreciate that. Because it's going to be real hard for me to tell the Toreador and the and the, the Gangrel story from Anasa's perspective. So the end goal here is to get him a better understanding of what our life is like. and Grant is hella efficient at what he does when he actually gets around to doing it. And if he's going to be around for a while, he's got to have an idea about what he's up against because a shotgun's not going to help him against everything. All right. We'll give him a one-on-one. -on -one. Why not? Thank you. Anything better to do tonight? <laughs> as she I says mean, that, I... as she kind of unlatches her skateboard from its sling and you hear it clatter to the ground, she looks over to Ava. Beat you there. <sighs> <laughs> Yes. Ava rolls her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and off they go. It doesn't take long before you get to the bar as it's around the closing hour, two, three in the morning. And there's still people eating and drinking, but it's less of a, a bit bustling scene as you walk in the back. You can actually hear Haley and Grant having conversation and Haley laughing at something Grant said as he then lets out kind of a quick chuckle as you make your way into the kitchen. He spins around as Haley goes back out and uh, about to work, but surprised for a moment to see the two of you there. Hey, fuck. I didn't see you come in. Where's, uh, where's the big guy? Uh, he's... Oh, God, is he fucking dead? No. Oh, God, and he, like, starts looking for his shotgun. Oh, uh, my gosh. Grant. Grant. What? <laughs> yeah. Chill out. Do you think I would be here if Ollie was dead? I hope you would come tell me. Sit down, Grant. Okay. And you look kind of confused, and he just pops up <laughs> on a nearby prep table, pushing over some, uh, like, Whoa. lettuce pieces. I'll show up whenever. You can pick pick and choose when you when when the scene, sure, sure, like, sure. when I, it feels good. I just just interrupt. I don't imagine that uh, that I'm I'm gone long. Okay. Ollie just uh, wanted Ava and I to sit down and chat with you about being a vampire. You know, this is kind of weird because this is like how my dad approached me when I like hit puberty. Grant, shut up. <laughs> As the door opens and you hear Ollie, yeah. I thought you sent them. She just said you sent them. And now I knew I was going to have to come back here. God damn it. <sighs> no, is, Grant, to okay. make you feel more comfortable, I never got the birds and the bees conversation. I can do it. <laughs> it Hard point, I think it's not necessary. I think I... what I'm trying to say, Grant. Yes. It, uh, we, we want, we really want to help prepare you prepare me for, for the shit. Am I the good cop, life? Dakota? What? Am I the what? good cop? No. Wait, wait, am wait. I, am I the bad cop? Because I thought <laughs> I was the good cop, because if I'm the bad cop, I'm going way differently. <laughs> hey, hey, hold, shut the fuck up. Prepare me. Does that mean I'm gonna, you're letting me do this? No. Letting you do what? Join this life. You said preparing me for this life. Bitch, you're already part of this life. No, but like all the way. No, Grant, not all the Grant, way. Grant, Grant, okay. Grant, 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 Grant. We can't Grant, yet. Grant. We can't yet. All right. Let's Let me just tell start you. We ain't got permission. I will not stand around and watch you be turned, Grant. And don't. I'll I won't. Because it's not as great as it's made out to be. It's really not. It looks pretty fucking fantastic from where I'm standing. Yeah, well, Grant, the really beautiful woman that walked in your bar the other night, she looks hella good too, but let me tell you, she's she fucking definitely trouble. definitely does. I just rear back and slap him. Oh shit, <laughs> yeah, you just crack him. Can... Okay, you are mad. Yeah, the whole go dining basement. room, the whole dining room for about a second, there goes down to a murmur. And not then he looks up in surprise, like fucking there's- Fucking with you. In the back, in the back, go to the back. And, and so Come on, Grant. Let's go away. back. Hey, everybody, just no worries. It's a spousal dispute. Whoa, Round on just, me. Yeah. Yeah, Dakota says, Yeah, what I'm trying to leave her asshole. ass. God damn. <laughs> I, gr I probably grind my nails down wood on the wall somewhere. Oh. Like you can hear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, I just I have to fix Dakota. Fuck. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
This is Eventually, going you make your so way far, into the like... back where the rooms are and kind of opening up a room and letting the light kind of head in. He plops since down. He, since he said that, I want to run downstairs and grab my uh, my little cigar box of like previous life stuff. Okay. You do and, so. Uh, Just I'll make my way back. All of you are in the room. All right. So give me the, the birds and the bees talk. Tell me what. I don't know. I don't. I still. What's the purpose of this? I you got to know what you get into. There you go. Am yeah. I getting into it? Am I getting into it or look, not? Look, 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 listen, kindergartner. All right. This is your first step. You want the birds and the bees? Shut the fuck up and listen. The birds and the bees is this is what I used to look like. And I'll unfold a, mm -hmm. a fight poster. Yep. And I'll point to myself. And then I'll take off the mask. Now, this is what I look like because of being what I am. So why don't they look like you then? Because we're from different clans. And this... Oh, clan thing again. Each clan has a... An upside and a downside. Now, I'll forever be able to breathe real well. But guess what? I don't have to do that anymore because, well, I technically died, kid. All right. And he then looks over to Dakota. Oh, what's your downside? I, um... I'm a gangrel. It's my clan name. It means I'm a little bit more tied to the beast, as they call it, which is the thing inside us that makes us a kindred. It's what drives the monster. So you have like an emotional scar while he gets a fucked up face? That seems completely un. No, no, no. It's, it's a lot worse than that. I, um... Well, other than being stuck to look like an 18-year-old for the rest of my life, I grow ears and... I get hairy knuckles, and when my beast gets you go angry, all American werewolf in London. Yeah, yeah, she does. What and it stays? It will stay for days at a time. That's what? How was that part of being a like oh spooky vampire in the night that you get animal? That kind of sounds that, cool for one. Grant, this isn't a comic book. This isn't a superhero movie. This isn't the Avengers. That's what okay? it sounds like. No. All right, hang no, on. Which... Ava, what about you? What's your downside? Are you a gangrel? No. Are you a... What is? What are you called, boss? I'm sorry. I'm a Nosferatu. What came first, the movie or you? Us. Oh, my God. This is so weird. Okay. What do you think it's based off of? A lot more of my clan looks a lot like him. The, the, from the movie. From the 40s. Oh, uh, that's... Our, our clan bane is that our physical deformities are a representation of the Nosferatu. Uh -huh. We all look this fucked up. And so, Ava, what about you? I'm from a clan known as Toreador. And normally... That's very fancy sounding name. We are pretty fancy. And normally, people would consider us the most in touch with folks like you. With humanity. Uh -huh. Sometimes, though, that doesn't always work out. And for somebody like me, it's kind of the opposite. So I've done a lot of bad things. The Toreador do bad things as their bad, their downside? No, the downside is I normally see beauty in everything. And when I don't surround myself with beauty, it eats at me. Makes us sick. That sounds so stupid. Being around me, she's weaker than when I'm away. That doesn't make any sense. It That's doesn't. So, what? Welcome to the kindred lifestyle where nothing makes sense. Like who chooses what? Like do you get to you say don't. like this? You don't what get if, to what choose. What if you suddenly like get the hots for boss over here? Is he suddenly not a problem? Even if Ava wanted to before all of this, her beast wouldn't let her. She is repulsed by me, at least sexually. Well. I don't want you to do it to me, boss. Got it. I figured that was the case. I'm sorry if I'm not taking Grant. this as serious as I'm supposed to, but you're telling me that you turn into a werewolf, you turn, you, ugly things make you sad, and you look like a fucking monster. This feels unfair. I would go with Ava's if I get to choose, then Dakota's, and yours last. You remember Crowley, right? You remember him, uh... Yeah. What was popping he? those black tentacles out of his back and his eyes going all black. Yeah, that was very, very actually horrifying. Yeah, that was 
That was his clan. I don't. What, what were they called again? Hakata. 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 I almost said Banu Hakim. Hakata. Uh, Hakata. Hakata. Sounds like a food. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of close. To, it doesn't matter. It doesn't sound. It, so what whatever. was his downside? His downside is he skirted what is known as the abyss. So the closest thing that we know is hell. Oh, that sounds. Okay. It's real bad. Okay. Well, I don't want to be him. You met Mr. Jackson, the pretty boy. Yes. Tall, dark, handsome, bald. Cannot. He's very imposing. Yeah. He's known as a Ventru. Ventru, uh... Well, they may as well be kindred royalty. Or at least they believe so. To be honest, I don't really know what the downside of being a Ventru is. Uh, anybody wants to make a... Or can make an intelligence occult roll. Oh, okay. I would Trying only know politics. Remember. Yeah, it wouldn't be a politics thing. Shit, I'll have his intelligence here. Anybody can make a roll, even if you only have one die. Nope. All right. So Ollie definitely doesn't know. I'm just going to make an intelligence roll because I don't have anything to add to it. No. Nope. All right. <laughs> oh, Ava, you, I mean, it's not super, it's not super uncommon to hear of, uh, especially being Toreador, you mingle with Ventru way more often. Um, they have feeding restrictions. They can only uh, feed from, well, it depends on the Ventru. Every yeah, Ventru has a feeding Ventru. restriction. Some are super loose. Some are super strict. It depends on the kindred. You got the Bruja. The Bruja is another one. They're a lot like Gangrel, except they're very, very easy to spark the fight in. Oh, they're you emotional. met one of those. Remember the big, bald bastard that came through the front door? Oh, yeah, yeah, Looking yeah. to pick a fight? Like the cop or something. Yeah, the sheriff. Yeah, the sheriff. That's what, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Earth quick to rouse. Anger. It doesn't make doesn't take much before he's ready to go all out. What else is there? Am I missing anything? The Lissambra. There's technically Thin Bloods. Mal and the Malkavian. Yeah. And Cadus. Oh God, there's so fucking many. It's just like a... Sh you get to... So this may... I, I, you have to pardon if I sound dumb as hell. You like do. when you become one, you get to like pick? No. Okay. You remember so how fi I get finish my the blood? list. Hang on, finish the list. I know I'm interrupting. All right, all right, the, all right. The, mil right. the mil milks, the Malkavians, Malkavians, Mal Malkavians. Malkavians. Got it. They're uh, the the loonies, the crazies. All right. They, uh, they see, they see, they see shit in everything. They they get visions. Uh, they see delusions. You spill out some tea, and they're like, "Oh shit, a god's watching!" And now I know the secret thing. But there's the Tremere. The they Tremere. That was Saito. Kind of blood magic. Yeah, Saito. the Asian guy, Saito. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, what's their up downside? I'm like thinking of it's all the clan veins. Uh, go ahead and go ahead and make me an intelligence occult <laughs> check. Uh, no one even might it. know. I think I the think Tremere's gonna... get off so scot free with veins. They do. Stupid. Hey, Dakota, I rolled a two. Ava. What? And let's see what Ollie rolls. I do hate. I do hate Saito. It would make sense that I would know. <laughs> I, I feel like I know this, but I don't know this. I know out of game, but I don't know if you know in game. I think in game he talked about it. Don't, don't they have like he may have. similarly restrictive feeding? Like they have to double their feet or something? No, like that? no, 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 no. It, Tremere can't blood bond anybody. That's it. Oh, okay. Oh, that, can't be that blood is. Bonded. Yeah, that's that's pretty. It's easy. great. Yeah. It's a fucking, yeah. and they can't Tremere, and they can't yeah. blood bond anybody. They just blood bond just don't. Yeah, Tremere <laughs> can't uh, bond themselves. They get real. Yeah, blood. they can't bond other people. They can be bonded. But they can be. Mm -hmm. uh, what else do we have? Wait, know, what? That's it? The, the girl that she met, yeah. the woman. Wait, what? That's it? What, why would I not want that? That's a... I don't want any slaves uh, or nothing. L listen, l listen, before you, you dive headfirst into that, that like they're the scene as the local wizards and nobody trusts them. Nobody trusts Tremere. Yeah, they're a bunch of assholes. I mean, Saito wore a green suit. Every day. It's true. Saito was a... Piece of garbage. Piece of garbage, right? What do you think about this, uh, the Tremere, Ava? I, I like them. Okay, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> Ava, you're painting his bias. He wants to know what you liked because he wants you to like him. Ollie, shut the fuck up. No. Look, look, Grant. Grant. This is not a. We're not here to present you a catalog. This feels like a catalog. I'm not gonna lie, but hang on. Well, we're then almost you're done. not. We're almost done. Listening. Okay, we're almost. I am listening. It's fascinating, but it, you tell me, Dakota, it's not like a comic book, and then the next thing you tell me is that you grow wolf ears. It's very weird. We're almost okay. done. We're almost done. The what cadence. else was there? We got. 
thin, thin, thin men. So... Thin blood and caitiff. Oh, I don't remember that one. Okay. Yeah. The thing <laughs> is, Grant, not everybody can turn you. This is where thin bloods come in. If okay. Ollie can't turn you and Dakota can't turn you. Why? Because they're too young in their own life. Our blood is young. And if we decided to turn you, you would only be a half vampire. And you are seen as... I kind of thought I was already like half. No. No, in our world, you're called a ghoul. That is... Man, I feel insulted, but okay. Yeah, it's pretty insulting, but that's why I always give you choice. Most ghouls don't get choice. Well, lucky me. Okay, so within bloods are half. What does that mean? Like that means that all the bad only... sides, none of the upsides, or a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. They get some of the upsides. They get some of the downsides. Also, they're extremely frowned upon, as in they're a little they're unliked. banned. They're banned they're from a, the city. They're a lot unliked. In fact, more often than not, they're supposed to be killed or moved out of the city. You see my my lack of haste in trying to turn you. Yeah, it's getting a little clearer, a little clearer. Okay, so the last one then. The caitiff. Yeah, that one. The caitiff, uh, severely underrepresented. And, well, there's good reason. They are considered a clanless, but they can become any clan. They just have to do some unthinkable things. Uh, That was a meta thing I did. Uh, Thin bloods can become any clan. Oh. Caitiffs. Where he was only offered Tremere because there was some magic involved. If you're talking oh, about Zach, then yeah. that's that's Ollie's knowledge. Then yep. he's literally just speaking from his oh, own knowledge. Sure, sure, sure. That's fine. Uh, you, uh, Ava would. Uh, I mean, other people can can kind of interrupt and correct if they so choose. It's that's pretty common knowledge. Other than that, but Ollie's, yeah, it makes sense that Ollie wouldn't necessarily know. But either way, continue. So, okay, they're clanless. Yeah. Does that mean? Does that mean they have no downside? Uh, That's actually technically correct. <laughs> they really don't have a... Their bane is that they are... The, like they're, they, Their bane technically is that they are uh, they have a minus two in their social pools because Camryl don't they look can't. on them nicely. I was yeah. going to say, you know what their bane is? That they are clanless. Without a clan, you have no representation as a kindred. It... it we all have something that makes us who we are. And puts you in a hierarchical structure within their social scale, regardless of whether you like it or not. So where, your... where does like what I am now then? What are, what are, you what sir, are we? You are, while they call them ghouls and completely illegal, and we're not supposed to talk about it, you are definitively seen as property. You are technically viewed by the Camarilla, which is my law, as my property. And if I break the law, they could take you and they could kill you as a punishment to me what happens to ghouls that don't want to be ghouls anymore if you decide that you want to stop being a ghoul that ache will hit that addiction that you talked about will come back in full force but i mean more than that will they let me out if they know about you no no they won't okay but you can run away. Like the mafia. Once you're you in, can, you're in. That's right. You'll be dead. But the downside, the additional downside of being a ghoul is if you stop taking blood, even if it's not mine, let's just say that you wanted to be a, a free Roma. You would, you chose to support or at least take nothing from anybody else. The blood stops, but the age catches back up. See, you stopped aging the moment you started taking my blood. You started feeling real good, right? You shook those old, those old aches. You started feeling pretty strong about yourself. You notice it, no more gray hairs popping in. Your muscles don't ache as bad. That age catches up. And it catches up like that. So I'm either half in for the rest of my life or all in for the rest or of all my in. life. And you're telling me that going all in is something that you don't want me to do. So I have to stay in this half state forever because if I stop, I start, the addiction comes back and I rapidly age. You want to know the health benefit to being where you are? You can enjoy every part of the living world. You can see the sun, you can drink, you can eat food and enjoy it. And 
most importantly, Grant, you can have sex. You can enjoy every part of what it is to be alive. Because when you become us, sex is a tool. I can't enjoy it. Alcohol I can't even enjoy a drink. Makes us ill. We vomit. I even blood sometimes when we do that. We can no longer have children. There's no point in loving anyone ever again, really, unless they are a kindred because they'll just pass us through. So you have to find it. I, I get it. It sounds like hell. So let me just be up front and let me ask one last, one, one more question. I can't promise it'll be the last, but I want all your honesty, all three of you. You have all these terrible things. You can't see the sunlight. You can't enjoy sex. You can't eat food or drink. You vomit, all these things. Would you give it up? Would you go back to being a human? Would I go back to before all this happened? And before, if you could avoid it, if you knew how to avoid it, would you? Probably. Chicago had its grips in me long before I became a kindred, and I wasn't going anywhere. But the truth is, I would love to have seen my son get older on my own time. What about Dakota and Ava? I was destined to die young anyways, Grant. I didn't have a life before this one. I was insignificant. So then, no. I guess not. And what about you, beautiful? I don't like to think about regrets or the past or what I would change, what I go back if I could. What's done is done. How I am now is how I am. But because you're asking, no, I wouldn't go back. Although technically I was not given a choice like you are. I too was destined for death. I'm given a, a life. It's not a very good one. But I don't want to go back to what I was. Scram. The woman who sired me, she... She made it sound like a comic book. That I would have the power to assure that nobody ever beat on me again or touched me if I didn't want them to. That I would be powerful and strong. And those things are true to some degree. But there was a lot of lies in that and a lot of too goods to be true. Because the fact of the matter is, I'm stronger now than I've ever been. And I'm still beat on by the world. So your strength and your beauty and whatever this vile blood brings with it, it's not gonna change that much. It's not a beautiful thing. So if you want to bear the burden, go for it. But at least as half in, you still have somewhat of a chance. I, I mean, I'm... I'm... <clears throat> what? Uh... I have a, I, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to push buttons, but I have another question. Ask. The other chick that was in here the other night, she kept talking about not following rules and shit. Is she part of the same system as you are? I don't understand. She's a kindred, but no. Yeah. She's not a part that. of the same system. She's ancient. Do you have a choice then? To be Very where powerful. you are? Not particularly. I mean, you can you can say she spoke flowery words, but let's be real. Look into the other two. If our law knew that she was here and what she probably is, they would either exile her or kill her on the spot. Shit. There's yeah. a downside to everything. She puts herself at risk. But she chooses to live her life as she sees fit, just like every kindred technically can. As long as we follow by the Camarilla's rule. A 
set of rules called the Masquerade. It's how we stay safe. Gotcha. Not everybody God, chooses so to follow many, those rules. So many fucking questions that just, just can't. I don't have the time tonight. <laughs> and he just like kind of clears his throat. There will always uh, be questions, Grant. We still have questions. There's upsides. I'm not just going to pour downsides upon you, make you think it's just this well, po I've seen bullshit. you destroy things that you... I've seen some of the upsides. Well, at least through you and Dakota. I'm not sure what... And he looks to you as not... No offense, girl, but... I mean, you're beautiful, but I've never seen you really do anything crazy. <laughs> I've gotten the angry the most out of all three of us. Yeah, sure. Not as deadly, but She's still criminally, scary. She's criminally stunning, but that's part of it. You ever seen when Ava walks into a room and everyone stops drinking? Yeah, how can you stop fucking not? A, 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 listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a dog. He looks over to Ava, apologize, but you, do you see this woman? Yeah. Very few, very rarely does a fucking supermodel walk through the doors of a right, dive Grant. bar. Listen, listen to yourself right now. That's it. That's her power. It's the power of allure and awe. She gets to sap you in and she can convince you to do whatever she wants you to do. Even if you could empty out your wallet, go kill a family member, drive off of a cliff, she can convince you to do it all. And you'll and think I've, it's a good fucking idea. I've made men do that before. He goes silent. He looks like he's gonna say something then he just swallows. When, I've when ruined lives i've ruined families is that your boyfriend from before then what happened to him the guy who just kept showing up at the front door he's gone he's dead okay message heard <clears throat> just have you ever made me do anything i mean aside from fawn over you no I've done, when I, really? I don't, I don't actually think you're hot. You make me think I think you're hot. No, she's playing It's not like Grant. beer goggles, you idiot. I'm uh, trying my best to uh, understand. No, just stop and look. You can tell objectively that she's attractive. That's fine. But at the same time, she basically has a slider, like a dial. Think on like a, uh, like an amplifier where you turn it up. She can oh, turn it up and you. make you like really actually put on drunk goggles. Oh, this is very weird. This is very it's, weird. It's a lot to take in and I don't really know how to handle it. So I apologize for my casual demeanor. Shit, there's only three of us here. Imagine if we had someone from every clan, your fucking head would pop off. Was that all of them? All of them that we know of. Except for Bass. She's, She's a new clan called the Ministry. I, we don't know much about. And they get like inducted like a priest or something. We went in for a, a, a sermon. <laughs> oh damn! I wasn't. So damn, she's mm -hmm. religious. Mm. Right. I mean, well, I, um, no, now I'm no, I mean, I'm so, scared, but don't make me slap you again. I don't know if I'm horny too. The, the, you know the I mean? camp, the camera, scorny. Uh, our, our, you're terrible. That's fucking awful. Grant, just listen to me. The, the camera makes me scorny. I like it. The camera God. is is our law. It's our it's our governing body, right? There is a group that operates outside. <sighs> Called the Anarchs. They're just unhappy with the way shit is. They don't like. Wait, what? Who are the Anarchs? The basically are the kindred. Dropped that before, but now that I, I mean, you're dropping more details, you just gave me what? what Listen, the, who just, are the just Anarchs? Hear me, hear me, hear me out first, all right? The Anarchs are like these uh, really obnoxious and annoying babies that are like mom and dad are constantly giving me rules, and I don't like to operate under them. So I'm gonna go do something over in my corner. Fuck mommy and poppy Camarilla. Okay, so that's what. Boss but we're still gonna follow mom and dad's Hold rules on. when we get over there. Exactly. That's that's one hundred percent true. But boss, if I think she is what we think she is, they're called Sabat. And they look at people like you as if you are a tool for feeding and for fun, and that's it. And more often than not, from my understanding, they see you as cattle. Purely as food. And they call you kine. Sabat call like okay. Uh, I don't know no, what that means. no, kindred use the word kind to describe. Um, yeah, I am I, not to hold, but kindred is like your term for yourselves, then. <laughs> it's a little yeah. less comic booky than vampire. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. Way more fancy. Sounds French or something. Sorta. I, I guess, Kurt, we, we, 
We want to answer your questions, and I think I see what Ollie's getting at. Your excitement, as if this is some... <sighs> vacation. To some grand amusement park where you get all of these special powers that come out the other side is... I guess, uh... It is naive. And stupid. Thing is, you lose everything from your previous life. You never get to see your mom. You'll never talk to your brother. Your niece Why? and nephew's lives will constantly be... Because if they find out about you, they will kill them. Or take them, much like they did my son. And then turn them into cattle. You saw my son, he beat the shit out of you. That's because of my lifestyle. Yeah, but... <sighs> Never mind. Doesn't matter. It does. Rant. It does. No, no. Listen. I was gonna say, well, if I was one of you, though, I could fight back. Potentially, yeah. Grant, you have perks right now. You, you don't age. You have, you been, you're healthy and you're going to remain healthy as long as you get blood once a month. When you and become I, us, you need blood once a night almost, almost yeah. every night. But uh, by law, as I've learned, I'm also property, which is kind of By the law. No, no, it completely is. Do you think- and I'm supposed to treat you that way, but no, I, don't. I don't think I don't think you see me like that or anything where a boss sees me like that or Dakota sees me as property. But now I know that others who walk into this place don't see me like you guys see me. I always assume Correct. they saw me like you saw me. Do no. not. I can tell you, even if you are turned, people will not see you the way you want them to see you. That is correct. I you much, you much am constantly addictive. spat on. You'll be a lick. Remember that even, night? Even, even, yeah. The night that, that the guy came in the back door and he was talking to me and you put a shotgun to the back of his head? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's like my clan lord. They call the Primogen. And uh, he could have, he could have sentenced me to death and you to death for that. That, that is a transgression. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. I didn't know that I couldn't do that in our own fucking bar. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He so they can here. just walk into your your fucking bar. He was invited here, but if he were to do that and take some sort of physical act against me, then there are laws about that. But that's a primogen, man. That's like It's some medieval bullshit, is what it yeah, is. That's really yeah, what it is. Fucking shit, dude. Sounds like some Lord of the Rings garbage. It kinda is in a lot of ways. <sighs> and everybody's got okay. fucking powers. All right. Just just know everybody's got powers. I can bend bars and go invisible. I can scale a wall. Dakota can get hit by a truck and fucking shrug it off. And no matter what you say or do, losing control and then being told not to do something by Ava is still one of the scariest things to think of. That even at your worst of your worst, when you're a fucking madman, she can just say, stop, and you do it. Well, I don't know what to say. Maybe simmer on it. You talk a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Is there like a Just... book I can read? <laughs> no. A book on all of this would be called A Masquerade Breach because yep. it is written copy of, of our ways. Oh my god, there's so many fucking rules. And yet you want to be a part of this. All in, right, Grant? I, I mean, I guess I'm in. I don't know. Uh... Okay. Like I said, similar. Uh, you know what? Congratulations. Point fucking made. I'm going to think about everything. You just got to consider it. You got to consider it. Look, I'm, I'm happy to have you be in, be in the bro in arms for as long as you want to be. But I saw something in you that I didn't see in a lot of people. There was dedication, there was loyalty, and a willingness to shake your life right. And the only reason that I gave you blood was because... Well, I knew that some terrible things were coming, a storm, and without it, there have been multiple times where I think you would have died. Well, shit. And I'm not going to say it more than this one time, but I care about your lanky ass, so don't yeah. die on me. I don't want to die. <sighs> All right. Just do me a fucking favor, then. I'm not going to ask for shit. Not right now, anyway. I need to swallow it. 
but if there ever gets to a point where like it's I die or you turn me, you pull the trigger and turn me because I'd rather be you than dead. You know that we are dead. Yeah, right? but you're also still talking to me. Yeah. If it's just me and I have to, and it means your death, the fact becoming that I... a thin blood will mean that you're dying and I'm sentencing you to another death. But if I got a choice and that option but is there, death. I won't table it. Here's my fear. What if these people that draw their make the law decide that I'm worth killing? I'm property. You can't say no to that, right? No, not don't. really. I can't. So, I don't want that to happen. I'm not saying it's gonna. I'm just saying, like, I hate you... that my fate can be taken out of my hands so fucking easy. You were blissfully unaware before all of this, and people are still fed on every night by kindred in the city that are none the wiser. And if one of them have a slight twitch or desire to get an extra sip, you could have died anyway. Uh, okay. We all risk death as well with every decision we make among our kind. You Literally, never know who will betray you. Telling you these things. What's the plan? Would get us in trouble. What's the plan? And what's the plan for you? Like, okay, like for me, like as a person, right? Like. I have a, I had like a, a, a life I wanted to live and it didn't happen that way and you saved me and changed the course of my self-destruction. I'll have, forever be thankful, don't get me wrong. But now that you have forever. It moves slowly, very like, slowly. Like molasses. Because we have all the time in the world. To do what though? What do you want to do? Whatever you want. You want to be a blight on the world. You want to be terrible and do terrible things. You catch a case, karma will catch up to you, and you'll get yours. But, in my case, I was cycling the drain as a human. Come back here, I'm, I'm stuck here. And all I really want to do is put some good out there, carve out my own little corner, and make sure the people respect me, and that I gain and garner the loyalties of those that are inside of my world, too. I'm tired of people fucking with me. But I don't have a choice. Okay. I think I'm done asking questions. I don't think I can handle any more if I'm going to be real with you. I think I'll have a drink tonight. I think that's a good idea, Grant. Yeah, me too. Any drinks for any of you? And he's just, he kind of pushes himself off the table. We've had a very busy night tonight. Ah, oh, fuck it. I'll have one. I can still enjoy it a little bit. All right, thank God. I don't want to drink alone. And he goes all in, like, with that sigh of relief, he goes. You want to rouse check for, uh, tea, rouse um, the blood? You, can you make tea, Grant? Yeah, sure. I, I think we have, like, and he looks around. It's, like, just, like, your typical restaurant, just, like, regular, ba like, nest tea, tea bags. <laughs> and, uh, he's just like, yeah, sure, I'll make you one. And your hunger doesn't, doesn't go up, uh, Ollie, but yours does, Dakota. And, uh, he does. He brings over whatever you ask for a drink and himself, and he just fucking drinks and stays quiet. And bring doesn't, up a good scotch. Yeah. And like, he doesn't really bring up conversation. Just kind of enjoy. It, it may not be enjoying your company, but your company is making him more comfortable as he's losing himself in his own thoughts for a little while and just thinking for a bit. But that's where the night kind of ends. And as the camera pulls back and looks up to the sky, it, then we see the words two weeks later as the camera shifts and then we're down to the movie theater. The three of you were together in the lobby before there's a rapid knock, knock, knock at the front door as your nights are only just getting going. But before long, the door flies open and in strides the harpy, Rhonda. Evening. Good evening. Oh, good. All three of you are here. I was hoping I'd catch the three of you and make my time a little short. There's an Elysium this evening, an emergency Elysium. The three of you are required to attend. Emergency. Ivory Tower. Understood? We will be there. She nods. She leaps. You are left alone. Dakota gets a shit-eating grin across her face. Emergency. Tavis pulled through. Well, this is um, good, but also concerning. I mean, I bet the sheriff will be there. I bet he will. 
We'll see. Dakota. What? <laughs> Be careful, but also we should. Oh, I, I'll keep my distance. Keep your distance, but make sure he knows you're there. Oh, he'll know I'm there. <laughs> This How do you head to, fun. to the Ivory Tower? Is it, well, is I feel it like Colorado? skateboard is probably inappropriate. <laughs> I will gladly take us to the Ivory Tower. As I always do in my vehicle. Okay. Everybody makes their way to the Ivory Tower. I'm Actually, to you know what? As we, go to, I was about to say, as we go to get in, uh, Dakota sure, sure. stops Ava. There's one thing Dakota wants to say before we do this. Sure, go ahead. If we get an ear with the prince, if you... Get an ear with the prince. Yes, I'm not counting maybe, on it. <laughs> maybe letting her know that we have some information and on McTavish could benefit us and keep us in her good graces. And then we can maybe seed some Damien information about needing another hound. Do you think it's wise for us to bring up that we know anything about McTavish in case anything slips? Jackson made it seem like quite a few people knew about McTavish. Either way, if we leave McTavish out, I still think it's a good idea. Mm. Tonight, she will be concerned about security. Yes. As well, she should be. And being down two hounds and... I'd be happy to put in a good word for Damien. I think he would be a suitable choice, and I'll let the prince know. Okay. You're actually not being brought to Ivory Tower. I apologize. You're actually being brought to the theater that you were brought to the very first in season one. I think is where the oh yeah yeah happening. that yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. you're heading back there. That's where you're you're, you're instructed to go. Does Ali have anything to say uh, now that he's returned mentally? No 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 no. Okay. Not a, it's not a long journey, undisrupted, uh, undisrupted, and you taking a vehicle, I imagine, uh, just to drive down there, make it quicker. It's a relatively short ride. The city falls into view, and as the city, city skyline uh, becomes, uh, kind of surrounds you with the skyscrapers, the sky, the clear sky and the moon, illuminating a lot of the roads as well, you make your way to that theater. And there are already a few vehicles here, and actually you see a few uh, figures making their way into the side door where you are, uh, where you went in the last time as well. You make your way out over to that side door and you and you file in but before you even get inside you can actually hear voices shouting echoing throughout the theater sounds like there's some debate or something happening but you can't quite make out the words that are actually coming forward the three of you make your way into the door and back into the theater where the ma majority of the congregation is and what you actually see is a scatter shot of different kindred um you actually see in the distance mr jackson and mr sovereign sitting over by some chairs listening in on everything uh, you actually see up on the stage, the prince sat next to, uh, is, uh, stood behind the prince is also the sheriff. Uh, and she seems to be fielding, shouting coming from the actual theater itself. Uh, the uh, Persephone and a few other Tremere are actually just uh, standing in the back, huddled and talking to one another. Um, who else would be there? Uh, Mo uh, not Molly. Yes, Molly. What is, that? What is her name? Uh, Rosa. No, not Rosa. 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 Rhodes is actually the one that's shouting. She's the one that's actually shouting at uh, at the prince. You're not, as you walk in, uh, the only words you hear is like, is like, and it was his job, his job, and we're to trust him. We can, how are, and, and, and as uh, she's shouting, Bella actually holds her hand up and says, I understand your concern, please, please. And, and Rosa eventually kind of calms down a little bit. You all kind of file in. There are other kindred that are not of seats of power. Some faces you've seen around the city. You actually see Nero and Brett uh, off in the corner having a conversation with Kathy as Kathy looks over their shoulders and catches and listens in on as, as Bella talks every so often. And Sienna is actually milling about somewhere up on stage. You can see her just behind the curtain um, watching as things go on with a, with something in her hand as she seems to be either writing or typing or something. You can't tell if it's a notebook or a, a tablet of some sort. Eventually, everything seems to kind of calm down. Can I get a uh, wits politics roll from the three of you? Mm -hmm. Oof. Not a good roll, that one. Ah, what? I got a three. Oh, nice. More than a three. You got a five. You crit. Oh, shit. I did get a five because I critted. Yeah, oh, wow. There. You, 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 you messy critted. Um, so maybe you just kind of say it out loud. 
But as uh, Dakota looks around, do you realize the entire council is here barring one? Where are the twins? <laughs> Looking around. <laughs> she she kind of co- shrug bites her lips as she says that. You look around. Nobody you can't see the twins. Does this you seem think... this doesn't seem like a proper one where we should like go bow to the prince and just let her know that we're here. This he, seems the like middle, there's some there's some. She's in business. the middle of debating members of her council, it looks like. Council members are shouting. Uh she seems to be shouting back. She seems to have a hard time keeping control, but people still are listening to her. Um, but they get a few extra words in before they get quiet now. I want a front row seat. Come on. You said she's talking with the other primogen specifically? Well, Rosa is in the, in the, she's like three rows back from the stage and she's actually shouting at the prince. Prince ends up shouting back. Um, eventually, uh, uh, Persephone actually speaks up and says, how can we have your guarantee? How can we have your guarantee uh, that, that, that the sheriff can keep us safe? And then uh, the Bella simply clasps her hands. He has kept the city of Chicago safe for decades upon decades. Not a single kindred is perfect, but he has done the best he can and his loyalty will not be disregarded. Oh, I sit in the front row. Oh God. We're Snitch. Huh? We're Snitch. As you you actually look around for Snitch, the only one who actually can perceive Snitch is a, no, that's not true. He's not invisible, this is Elysium. He's over in a corner, just leaning, listening, watching, saying nothing. Persephone speaks up, Rosa speaks up, um, and as, uh, and, uh, as, as people continue to shout, it's very clear that Bella is losing control of the situation. People are still speaking up without being called on and speaking out of turn. There is true chaos happening. And it isn't long before there's consistent questions of safety. That's the, the, that's the consistent theme being brought up. You promised it was taken care of. We've done everything that you've asked and everything was peaceful. And now this has happened. Before, as, as these kind of questions keep getting raised, eventually Jackson stands. And as Jackson stands, he steps forward uh, and he actually looks to the prince and looks back to everybody. He's like, Prince Bellamy, please take the stage. She actually looks and, and to him and gives him a nod. And uh, he takes the stage and he approaches her and he actually looks to her uh, kind of with, with a, you see like kind of not, not compassion, but a, a stern understanding. And then the words he speaks are too quiet for you to hear. You don't really know what he's saying before she kind of just nods and she, uh, he walks and steps down, uh, taking his seat next to Mr. Sovereign once again. She takes a look around, uh, still veering. It's not like she looks panicked or anything. She's keeping a very stoic gaze, raising her voice as needed, but not more than that, not really ju- jumping into any shouting matches whatsoever. Um, and she takes, a, she takes a moment, she says, uh, for those who have just joined, before we continue on and have the discussion that needs to be had, we must inform you of the tragedy that has struck here on Chicago. On this day, the twins, who once took the seat at the head of the council for the Malkavians, had been gone, had gone missing for a few days. Upon inspection and sending Sheriff Hodges to find them, it was discovered that the Malkavian twins have been killed. As soon as she says that, the, the those who weren't asking questions start to rouse up and start talking back and forth. There's a bit of shouting to some, and uh, there's panic amongst others. Did the, the three of you, did the three of you react in any way? Uh, I yeah, Ava will look at the two of them like it's like shit. <laughs> the cover covers her mouth to make it look like a gasp, but she's smiling. I'm gonna I'm moving to to snitch in the corner. Oh, you actually get up and, and may start making your way over. That's fine. Yes. There, uh, we'll get to there in a moment then. Um, I, they're on the stage, yes? They're up on the stage. No, I'm gonna watch this one play out. If they have an open mic, <laughs> that'll be great. If not, then I'm... Dakota's <laughs> here to watch this burn. She wants to watch Bella burn. She, Bella, she ain't prepared yeah. for this. Ava will sit with Dakota in like the front seat. Like the two of us just yep. like. Dakota watching. reaches down and like grabs, grabs Ava's pinky and squeezes it really tight in her pinky. Just yeah. a reminder of like, we've way back when, when you ate a body and you were recovering and Ollie's concrete room on the floor. Dakota was like, just wait. If we have each other's backs, yep. we'll be right where we want to be. And we got a front row seat, just like we did on the roof of our fucking theater. It's a lot of communication and a pinky squeeze. It, it, means, it, it means a lot! It means a lot! This is their gal pal squeeze! Yeah. <laughs> she just spirits touch and she picks it all up. All yeah. Once. My aspects. Oh, okay. 
the rousing of the audience is quelled when Bella actually speaks up and asks for people to calm down and bring themselves down and under control. And there is a, a genuine uh, a muffle of the conversation. It doesn't go completely quiet. There's still some chatter happening as, as we see Dakota, as the camera lingers down by the hands of Dakota and Ava, and we see uh, Dakota grab the pinky and give it that all-knowing squeeze as uh, we watch Ollie make his way back over that way. Um, then, as the murmuring kind of comes down, uh, there's another shout once again, and this time, unsurprisingly, uh, it is from Rosa. And she she kind of fingers uh, at the sheriff and whatnot. Final death should be punishment. Members of the council are dead. I'm lucky I still stand here on this night, and the sheriff, who is supposed to guarantee our safety, not only lost a member of the council, but two kindred of the same clan in a night's time. The, uh, at that point, the sheriff actually looks to step forward and say something, but Bell actually puts her hand on his chest and he takes a, a half a step back. Um, and Rosa even kind of looks looks over to him and says, why don't you let him speak? Let him say his word, why? Why couldn't he keep us safe? Our kindred are dead now. And tell me, do you even know who the hell did it? It's at that point, Bella takes a beat and there's a moment of pause and she simply says, no. There's an uproar again, and Rosa speaks over all of them. Not only could he not keep our own primogen safe, he can't even find out who the fuck did it. I want his head now. He deserves to be dead now, dusted on the stage. And there's actually some support from some of them, uh, some other faceless kindred. And they're just like, yeah. Dakota, so Dakota stands. I know who did it. Oh, do you actually shout it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I please get from you? Uh, Cause you're trying to gather the attention of folk. Uh, charisma, uh, leadership, as you're just trying to command their attention. Okay, four die, go, go! I got a one! The, you, you gather nobody's attention other than Ava's. There's too loud as you try and assert yourself. I stand again and kind of walk toward, I don't go onto the stage, but I walk towards it and I say it again. I know who did it! Are you saying it to the prince? Are you mostly trying to say I'm it saying to the it prince? to the council, because Molly's really driving this energy. Yeah, um, there's a lot happening here. Um, and so you shout, say, you, you can once again say, uh, you know, I know who did it. You make me another roll with a plus one this time, because you got much closer. The five dice pool total, I think. Yeah, that'll make it five. I got one a success. one again. Uh, for a moment, you catch, you catch Bella's eye. But I look right at her. And, and as she watches you, and maybe she hears you, maybe she doesn't, she once again uh, completely disregards you. It's at that point that you've tried now twice um, that it's a, you actually see out of the corner of your eye, Jackson actually stand as well. Um, and he actually starts to stride once again towards the front of the theater. Uh, and uh, do you say anything or do anything before he makes his, his way there? I just make eye contact with him. I don't know oh, what you, his you, plans are, so I just kind of, yeah. Eye contact with you, but it's at this point Ollie has, has made his way over to Snitch during the chaos of all of this happening in the net, past five to 10 seconds or so. And as you make your way over and, and stand next to him, his eyes watch you and they trail until he can't follow you anymore. And then they snap back to the front. He doesn't move. He's as still as a statue. Mr. Hopkins. Snitch. What's happening? It seems the twins have been killed. Do you have any idea of the means, the method? I've been looking into it. Any suspects? Quite a number of them. Malkavians okay. make good friends or worst enemies. Can I narrow that pool for you? If you have the knowledge. Just caught wind. Don't know anything about what they're doing, but caught wind of their movement. Heard of McTavish? It's a name that's been brought up a few times. It's no, uh, no surprise. The Anarchs are in disruption. And pretty much everything I hear this fella, he's uh, not afraid to make big plays. Seems a little flashy. Wasn't exactly that long ago that we got wind of the sheriff's little place blowing up as well. This, this is not a explosion, but is it that far flung? Is this McTavish guy even capable? I don't know. Do you? I've not met him. Don't know anything about him. 
I'll have my rats scurry in his direction and appreciate the information, Mr. Hopkins. Just word on the Kindred Street. You know how it is. He nods and puts like a, he, he does turn his head just, just a crick until he can catch you in his eyesight. And he just gives you a nod for his, goes back to watching the scene unfolding as Dakota walks up. Uh, you actually can see Dakota walking up and you know she's saying something. You can hear her voice, but it's completely drowned out by the absolute cacophony of voices that are filling this echoey, empty theater as they are, plenty of people are shouting and it's hard to say here who's shouting what. Rosa certainly can kind of pierce through it all, um, but for the, even even her voice is being drowned out and you actually watch as, as Mr. Jackson comes into view and he steps up to the stage and he actually strides up to the stage without asking for permission this time. You watch and there's the, mer the, the cacophony of voices actually kind of quiets when that happens. There's a little bit of a, an uneasy feel throughout the theater as it happens. And he simply walks over to Bella, back to the audience and completely blocking her out. Dakota, you can actually um, make me a wits awareness as words are being spoke because you're so close. Ooh, Bella don't want Dakota talking. Three. You can hear the you can hear what Jackson says to him as you listen in. As as what Jackson says to Bella rather as you listen in. It's no surprise that your council has been empty a seat now for quite a while. To not have the money in the deep pockets of our clan flowing through the council and through the Camarilla proper, in more professional channels, has left your security a little weakened. If you wish to quell the masses. Perhaps a new appointment this evening would help sate their anger. There is a certain security that comes with the Ventru blue blood and our money. A seat on the council, a calm. I hesitate to say royal, but a firm, stoic opinion. Bring a foundation to the council that has been lacking for some time and perhaps the mass rabble behind us will quell. Our clan has learned their lesson. Camille was appointed and did her job and still turned her back on you. So, allow us to prove through true loyalty that we're worth having on the council again. And that's where his words kind of lay off. He turns and looks to you and gives you a uh, and also kind of like Snitch gives you a quiet nod to you, Dakota. He steps to the side, but he never leaves. He never fully turns to face the audience. He's always at kind of like this, uh, like a 45 degree angle, mostly facing, uh, mostly facing Bella. And you watch as Bella watches him with just her eyes as he steps to the side. Wits insight for Ava as well, because you're close enough, Ava, to see your face. Two? Did I get two? Two. Oh, Ava with the big Ava with five. A, wow, Damn, three, three tens. tens. Oh, wow. Ava, Ava. knows that, that T. Yeah. I was going to say. Ava, you uh, watch as you watch the face of somebody who has been forced into a position that they'd rather not admit is correct. Shame and anger. As she chews her lip, her eyes kind of narrow a little bit as she watches him step to the side. And then her eyes back to everybody as they're still mumbling even though Jackson took the stage their their volume once again raising Jackson carries a certain weight with him he's been around for a while and he can break certain norms it seems but uh, that that all those emotions are within about three seconds before she clearly composes herself she steps forward and past Jackson without looking at him breaking the eye line her, her crimson red dress brushing by him the wind of the dress just whipping by his his, uh, his shoes his freshly polished shoes as she walks to the edge of, uh, of the stage and takes full attention, not using an awe or anything. As it's clear she's about to say something a bit more important, everybody begins to murmur down. I understand your dis... Uh, I understand your unrest. We are all kindred. Though we may come from different clans and have varying different degrees of beliefs, we all sit in Chicago for one reason. It is our home and it is ours. Decades and centuries of our own lives poured into this very city to ensure 
that after all the chaos that has come across the countries and other, uh, the country that we live in and other countries across the ocean, we still stand as a strong symbol of the Camarilla. The fools in LA have fallen. London, all but wiped out, and New York is a mess on its own. But Chicago stands tall, and I wish that to continue. And so I say with a heavy heart and shame that you are correct. My ego got the better of me, and our enemy slipped through the cracks. For too long have I put shame on a clan that has not deserved it. Perhaps in the beginning, for all the things that they did, their punishment was just. But now, the perpetrators of such crimes are dead or exiled. The Ventru deserve a seat on the council again. And with the Ventru come their finances, security, and loyalty. As she turns and does turn to Jackson, and Jackson simply gives the gentle nod. After years of having Cammy on the council, and almost a year of having an empty seat, I now turn the decision of who sits on that council to the clan proper. And it is my understanding that the decision the clan has made is for Kevin Jackson to take that seat. Am I correct? Most people quiet down and Jackson simply nods. She turns to the rest and any of the Ventru here have any objection to such appointments. You notice Ballard isn't here and the only ones here, uh, the only other Ventru that you actually see or at least recognize here is uh, Alan Sovereign. He says nothing, he just watches. And from this day, from this night forward, Kevin Jackson takes the Ventru Primogen seat. And he will have say, as all Primogen do, on how this city is led. As for the tragedy of the loss of the twins, I will allow them to grieve as needed. And when the Malkavians are ready to seat anew, they may approach me, and I will always have time to give them an ear. You have my condolences, Ch children of Malkoth. As far as my sheriff, and she turns to face Mr. Hodges, he has failed. He will be punished, but final death is not deserving. And he, he, he puts his head down, and there's a bit of a murmur again amongst the crowd. Not entirely sure if they enjoy this decision or not, but none speak out too heavily here. And after there's a few seconds of uh, disgruntled uh, chatter, and it's clear that nobody's going to speak out against it, Bella simply raises her hand to bring quiet again. I apologize for my failure as your prince. I will endeavor to do nothing but the best going forward. The Anarchs can never truly be ignored. I thought them gone. My mistake. Elysium, is can uh, Elysium has been called, and now I am dismissing it. Enjoy your evenings, kindred. And she turns quietly, and with the clacking heels on the, on the wooden stage, she passes by the curtain as the sheriff follows in suit. Most kindred stand up, and there's a loud lot of talking again as people begin to make their way out. Ali, Snitch looks to you. Have a good night. And I appreciate it. Of course. If you blink or look away, even for a moment, and look back. He's gone. He's gone. I imagine you all mill about Elysium for a little while. Is Molly still there? I mean, uh, Rosa? Uh, Rosa is still, uh, she, well, as as she leaves, uh, as, as Bella leaves through the stage, Rosa has a quick, like, barking, barks a few words that you're not really even sure what she says, and she looks like she's ready to march out of here. She's like walking to the exit. Uh, it, 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 would it be suspicious if I followed her? Like, I don't have to go on stage, I guess, but like, I no, would. No, no, no. You, you could follow her if you wanted to. It's not suspicious. You're following her out. Other people are walking out too. So if you want to catch her, you could catch her in the parking lot. Yep, that's perfect. That's fine. You walk out of the parking lot. Well, the camera will, as uh, as Snitch disappears and the camera follows Ollie back, it actually will go ahead of Ollie and then catch up with Dakota. 
as Dakota makes her way out on the other side of uh, of the theater. As you make hey. your way out, yep. I like yell at her, hey! She looks over her shoulder for a minute, sees it's you, she just lifts the lip. What the fuck do you want? I uh, wanted to chat about your views in there, if you have a minute. If you can keep up, and she just keeps walking. Dakota catches pace. Yeah, you do easily catch pace. Not like she's like celerating away from you. Say I agree with you. Say you're fucking sane. Say I have good information that he's compromised. Who's compromised? The sheriff? I look I look at her. I cut eyes like as she says the sheriff pretty loudly and you look around, there's still some, there's still people milling about <laughs> and whatnot. Do, and uh, do us both a favor and keep your voice down. <laughs> and she gives a nod and she actually starts jogging off the parking lot and like off, like across the street and just trying to get away. Yeah, Dakota will follow wherever she, yep, I mean, she just she kind of walks and I hope she's quiet, uh, you know, knows where the hell I mean, to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually she makes her way to a nearby park, basically, a small park. Yeah. Okay, you got info, hit me with it. And it better be reliable. It's no secret. The sheriff is a little, uh, he doesn't like me very much. What if I told you that's not because of his personal preference? I'd say, what the fuck do you mean? I think there's something more at play. I think he's being controlled by something outside of well, Kindred. In fact, I know it. And I've told the prince as much. He's attacked me twice. What is he? What What the fuck? Makes sense. Be straightforward. What the fuck do you mean he's attached to something that ain't us? I have good reason. Not even to believe. I have good reason to know that there is a fake contract out on the sheriff's head. Fa Look, that is the face I made when somebody first told me that. And I didn't believe it. Do you have evidence? Proof? Working. Look, Rosa, you're the only person who feels like I do about the sheriff. He is compromised. He's lost two, two hounds. And compromised or not, he's shit at his job. Something else we also fucking agree on. But I could use your help. Instead of yelling at Bella, let's actually do something to get him out of that seat. Okay, you got my ear. What the, you got a plan? <sighs> Well, I'm working on it. I thought maybe, you know, you might have some thoughts other than spewing hate at Bella in front of everyone. Bella's a bitch. Don't think you understand. I'm not long for the council. So me Trust saying shit me. don't matter at what all. What do you mean you're not long for the council? She ain't gonna keep me on the council. There's no fucking gang girl in the city. I'm representing myself and what, you? That's also not true. It's true legally, who else is in the city? It might be true right now, but it doesn't have to stay that way. But you've got to maintain that seat or else we have fucking nothing. Uh, so, okay. Look, it's a, it's a long game, right? I'm sure you didn't get to where you are because of yelling at your prince. I don't know if I have me. a fucking choice, but I'll do my best. But playing good fucking dog to Bella ain't something I've been wanting to do and haven't really done. I don't think either of us want to play good dog to Bella. I left everything I worked for so that the sheriff could maintain his temper tantrums on a regular basis. All right, so you want me to maintain the seat? Say I do. How long are we looking? What are you looking to do? What's the plan? The rest of the council has got to back you in believing that Hodges is unfit. Okay. It's gonna be a pain in the ass, but maybe. I don't know maybe. if Jackson threw a hole in the wall, but maybe I can talk to him. Did Bella tell you about him attacking me in the middle of a fucking kind apartment complex? He chased me into Chinatown. He came into Ollie's bar with kind all around us and tried to start a fight. If the he sheriff manipulated... wants you dead, a sheriff will kill you. Why aren't you dead? Because the sheriff knows that that will give him up. He has no reason to kill me. I was the best hound this city's seen in a decade. Hell, I'm better at his job than he is. Because guess what? I think I know who did it. She puts up her hand. All right, listen. 
I appreciate all the shit you're trying to give me, but you're putting out a lot of shit with no evidence, and I'm still on the fucking council. So if you come to me with anything next time, let's not do it in a parking lot. And let's do it where there's a little bit more, I don't know, proof of the shit you're trying to tell me. I'm work like I said. I know, I know, I ain't saying, listen, I'm not, I'm not shitting on you, okay? I am saying though, I'm still playing the political game and I still gotta keep And I'm head. only trying to help you because I, in there, you were hella close to pissing Bella off and you and I know what a bitch she can well, be. Well, five minutes ago, I was expecting to lose my fucking seat on the council within a month or so, so I didn't give much of a shit. But now well, if you're now, telling me there's a reason to give a shit, I'll start more giving a shit again. There are less seats than before. Bella made it very clear. Right now the council is weak and she underestimated the Anarch, something I told her not to do. I told her they would come back in force. I told her that. It's well, why Bella, I've been Bella has a history around. of underestimating threats. Yeah, well, Bella has under. <laughs> Bella tends to underestimate everyone. Okay. So let's let her underestimate us. Let's work this angle. But you've got to get the rest of the council. And if it means anything, and maybe it doesn't, Jackson, he, he's a good choice. He'll listen to you if you I'll come to him it. about the sheriff. Got it. Ben True, Ben True. I ain't gonna th trust him as far as I can throw him. Can I ask you something? Go ahead. Do you really want to be on the council? Fuck no. But it fucking serves its purpose because I was the only one who gave a shit about the goddamn lichens in the first place. And you mean by giving a shit? Keeping the goddamn city safe. So you don't really want this position at all. And everything you care about is the lichen. It's useful and it, and it serves a purpose. What we all gotta do that? things we don't like to make shit happen, right? I guess. As, you know, the only other gang girl in this city. As my representative, you leave a lot to be desired. And you want me to help you? And you no. You tell me. I'm doing a shit job. No. I'm gonna tell you that I desperately don't want to see our clan lose its place at the table. I'm trying not to. I'll play the game, okay? For now. Until you can either show me something concrete, or you just never show up again. But fine. I'll hold on to the seat as long as I fucking can. Have a good night, Dakota. Yeah, you too, Rosa. She just scampers off. I imagine the three of you recongregate. Mm. I, I, um, wanted to do is, I wanted to do something as well. Yep, before. go ahead. Oh, but both of you. Uh, go ahead, who, who wants to start? I just wanted to uh, say hi to Brett. And, sure. Um, yeah. It actually kind do. of aligns with what I wanted to do as well. Okay. Well, what does Ollie want to do? I uh, I wanted to approach. It's been two weeks. So mm -hmm. I wanted to approach Ava and say that uh, hey, it's, uh, it's probably the right time. And while Dakota's not here to do it, why don't we approach Kathy and Damien? and invite them out because um, my eight millimeter roll is in. That last filming of Stevie Ray Vaughan, you said it'd be two weeks. Right, I think that's a good idea. Brett's mingling with them all. They're all kind of sitting in the same area as they're, as they're all making their way out. And Brett catches actually your eye first, Dave, as you wake your way over and he great big smile as he prances over breaking away from Kathy. I thought I saw your pretty face in your, ha. Uh, Yours as well. And he what's just says that to you, Ollie. <laughs> what do you say? He said, what's up, sex bomb? He gives you a, a wing. That's what I like to hear. Well, uh, what a bombastic evening, was it not? I was just thinking that hand. she allows. Okay, he kisses your hand. Please join us, and you may too as well, Ollie, if you'd like. Uh, and like. He, he brings you over to where, uh, Kathy. Where are you sitting? They're not really sitting anymore. They're all kind of standing, uh, getting ready to leave. Um, they're all kind of congregated. It's Damien, Nero, uh, obviously Kathy and, uh, Brett. Okay. And th the, 
I'm I'm failing to remember. It's the the name of the band is Baby um, Baby Chorus. Baby, Baby Chorus. Chorus. Thank you. Um, uh, I'll approach Kathy. Um, and she smiles. Good to see you again, and you as well, Miss Heloise. Damien and Nero. They just um, nod at you. Nero actually, uh, as you approach, he's like, "If you may, I'm, if I may excuse myself." Kathy just gives a nod, and she's, "I'll, I'll speak with you another time." And he's Nero's part of Baby Chorus, right? Yes. You say that too. Yeah. You just say that out loud. Uh, I'm uh, out of game. I'm. Yes, Nero is part of Baby Chorus. Yes. Uh, if you'd have just a moment, it'll take just a moment. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, as as you kind of like just a moment, he does stop. Uh, I have a rather busy evening, so if it's you make it quick. Just a small invitation. I have gone out of my way to acquire since your previous performance at our theater. I've acquired a. One of the 13 original reels from Stevie Ray Vaughan's last performance on 8mm. I wanted to invite you, Kathy, and Baby Chorus to witness mm, something probably a bit rarer. He just kind of very slowly turns to Kathy. If we have room on our schedule and it would benefit all of us. She just nods. Kathy will look into it. She'll let you know. If there's anything else. That's all. Good evening. And as he goes to leave and walks out the door, Dakota passes by, bumping into him. He looks down to you. My apologies, young lady. And he just leaves. I love being called young lady. <laughs> <laughs> you see them all in the corner with Damien and whatnot, and uh, and then Kathy, and uh, you make your way over, and Dakota joins. How was uh, that received okay, Miss, by Miss Rain? By Kathy and by by Damien. What was that? How how is that received by by Kathy and Damien? Oh, uh, did Damien? Uh, Kathy actually like as he leaves and, and Dakota joins. Uh, Kathy looks over. That's eh? quite a find you have. Yes, a uh, bit harder to locate, but Dakota has made it a, a personal interest, and we we rather enjoy Baby Chorus, and we'd like to extend as many invites as possible. Well, then uh, perhaps we should all get together and speak of uh, when perhaps we can put on uh, the next concert in the theater and then and take a look at uh, this little musical thing that you've gotten for us. And she smiles. Okay. Is there anything else? Uh, it's, uh, don't get me wrong, it's a pleasure to see the three of you. And, uh, but business is business, and this Elysium has been rather bombastic. To say the least. Mm. Uh, That's it for me. Mm. Sure. Damien actually hasn't said a word, just kind of standing there. I was going to go to the, the painted lady, if anybody would like to join. Oh, uh, and Kathy actually gives you a, a, a toothy a grin. Unique taste, not my style. Nothing like letting go a little bit on a stressful evening. Brett actually squeezes your shoulder a little tight, Ava, when at the mention of, of Edith's Club. I'm always gay. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> uh, Damien shrugs. I'd rather uh, attend my recordings this evening. I appreciate the invite. Well, to each their own. And thank you, uh, Damien actually does say, for uh, allowing us to per to perform in your theater. It's always nice to be a first act in a newly opened, newly opened, uh, It also say, means uh, you're the best act. He, he does actually give a, like a very kind of like sheepish, childish smile to that in a way. He actually clearly takes that to heart. <laughs> um, but uh, after that, he's like, well, um, I've got a, I've got a song to write. And he turns and heads out. Brett actually like tur like kind of tries to turn you, Ava. Are we going? I looked at Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> I was interested in some fresh ink. Oh. No, oh. not party. We you you and I in our own way, Brett. You and I can I party, Brett. When you partied. I, well, I'm not. I'm, that's fine with me. I was just curious. <clears throat> what about you, big guy? I think I'll pass this time. I'm a downer anyway. I bring down the uh, Toreador mood. Hey, at least you're self-aware. And he looks to you, and he's like, come on, beautiful. Oh, Let's go enjoy God. it. Don't get too wild, banana hammock. Bring him back before, <laughs> uh, you know, daylight. He actually turns around. He gyrates his uh, his waist <laughs> at you when you call him that. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, Dakota kind of leans over and whispers in Ava's ear. Seems like a good time to pump him for information. Exactly what I was thinking. Is there going to be a moment where you're you a all true go hero? I just got a pat her on the back. <laughs> Is there going to be a moment where you all head back and kind of get ready and we can congregate to talk about the events, or do you want to immediately separate from Elysium um, and do your own things? Dakota just says, "I'll see you there, Ava." 
So Ava, you okay. would leave with Brett then? Yeah, I guess I'll okay. go with Brett. I, Dakota hasn't. She ain't gonna go change clothes or nothing. Yeah, that's, that's fine. what. <laughs> Uh, uh, it would leave Ollie and, and, and Dakota alone because the other, the Toreadors and whatnot are going to separate and go as well. Yeah. You sure you don't want to come? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to take in some of the night air and get this movie real. I uh, invited Baby Chorus and Kathy oh, to nice. uh, do a listening watching party of that 8mm yeah. reel. Yeah, they didn't like my Star Wars idea. Well, I figured that this was a bit more of the rally. And definitely a rare performance and it, it cost me... You know, quite a bit more than I care to admit, but I know that facilitating this would make you happy, and sometimes I just want to make you happy. Me happy? I, I think helping out baby Chorus is good for all of us. Yeah, I don't give a shit about him. You ought to. Oh, sure. Uh, I, yes, he's they're uh, attractive and handsome, and and they're <laughs> great musicians and stuff, but. I frankly couldn't get through flying fucks, but it makes you happy. I mean, it's good for the coterie, but again, yes. It does make me happy, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm not real good at gift giving. Uh, so you bought a movie reel for my favorite fake band? No, it, it's a little different than that. It's something that you wouldn't know that you needed until you got it. Oh. Yeah, I don't even know who, who Stevie Bay, Bay Ron is. S Stevie Ray Vaughan, one of the greatest I... guitarists to ever live. Fantastic. You might like it. I'm, uh, no doubt. I like music. Well, I mean, there's just nothing super exciting about going to a record store, so. My night is probably going to be a little bit of that, some cleanup, checking on Grant since we sort of blew his mind a lot. It's been a couple of couple of days, like a week or two. But uh, I'll put the reel up in the theater, probably in the in the box. Okay, you're gonna come watch it though. Yeah, I mean, when we get them, when we get the band there. Okay. Well. I have a feeling we all have a lot to talk about. That went over with Jackson really, really well. I thought I was gonna have to spill the beans. I told Snitch. Did you? I what told him the say? name. He, uh... I told him that I didn't really know if it's 100% him. I had no proof, but the word on the street is McTavish is making a move as an Anarch for the Anarchs. Well, Bella clearly didn't want my opinion, so... Well, I figured getting it to... Too. Getting it to Snitch, Bella's gonna find out. Oh, she'll find out. She'll find out, that's for sure. Now, yeah. I'm aware there's a lot of things. We want to do the tattoo, we want to do the club and stuff. However, time is running short. I'd like to sure. give that all the attention it deserves. Yep. I, so think I was about to, yeah, yeah. So instead, would we like to have the Coterie come together to discuss the happenings and see where your, where your opinions fall and then you separate from there? Or we could just end it now and pick up at the club, the tattoo parlor and the like next week. What I was about to say, yeah. The only thing, Dakota really is just going to go, and she would like to just tell them that she wants to start on a long-term full body. Yeah, yeah. But I'd like to have like that peace. conversation. and like. Oh, you actually want to do it? Oh, yes, Dakota was just going to, okay, great. Oh, no, perfect. I think it's worth examining and talking because it's going to reveal, I think it's a good Dakota thing to, to, to Inter look at. Oh, interesting. Okay. So I'd like to, but so if the three of you would like to get together and discuss the happenings of the evening, it's up to you. What would you like well, to do? Convene after. I think Ollie's going to try to Try to beat feet on the ground and stay kind of alone for the night. Get this so movie real and yes, the camera kind of stuff. pulls back from the theater. Then, as the Dakota and Ollie leave the theater, and you see a few other kindred amongst the three of you all separate and go your separate ways, like ants on the ground. As it pulls back just enough and it leans back up to the sky, that's when it'll fade to black, and we will return next week with some more DM. Ye beast, ye shy. Today's episode, I'm sweating, y'all. Wow, that was a crazy episode. <laughs> is it, is it the episode or the wig? Right. Uh, right. All of the above, like the, <laughs> the leather gloves, the leather jacket. I'm just quitting. A lot happened in four hours. Yeah, it <laughs> That's did. all I can say. <laughs> very, Not really. very much. It was like mm -hmm. one big conversation, really. And it was like in game yeah. like two to three weeks. That's true. Yeah, we did take it two, week, two weeks later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Plus the yeah. time that passed when McTavish was smuggled in. I like the way you uh, transitioned that scene too. It was really cool. <laughs> well, 
We hope that you all enjoyed this. And if you did enjoy it, we are going to be going to record a after show right after this. If you want to know what everyone's thinking inside their heads or, you know, sometimes uh, Mathis gives out some other little details that you might be interested in hearing about. Um, as I know the cast has many questions that they ask. Um, so definitely go check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash real for where you can support us and get access to those after shows as well as access to a whole plethora of other content pieces, depending on what, you, what, you know, your flavor is. Uh, we want to extend a huge thank you to our supporter, Jackson Decay. Thank you so much. Get some roll love in chat for Jackson. Thank you so much for supporting today's episode. Um, and you'll also be partaking, all of our Legend tiers and above will be partaking in some privately GM'd games. This month's games will be GM'd by the lovely Little Red Dot and Miss Magitech. The lady's taken over. <laughs> that's right, that's right! Hell yeah. Um, and of course, we have Baz's character sheet if you want to check out all of the deets on Baz, as well as our monthly recap is out. Check it out if you're interested in knowing how Roll for it runs and some of the cool things we have planned coming this year. Beyond that, we'll have some goodies coming up soon, Mass Effect as well as Ascension ones, so stay tuned. And of course, Ascension Chapter 2, Episode 3, MP3, and After Show are out right now. Well, actually, in five minutes, because we're ending a little early. <laughs> <laughs> um, but before we fully wrap up, I'm going to give all of these lovely vampires an opportunity to talk about what they're doing in their IRL lives and not their own lives. Although, oh. maybe some of you, I'm not sure about. <laughs> Might be one of the same. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we'll go around first and foremost. We'll actually go backwards this time. We'll start with Dakota Rain, played by the oh. Little Red Dot. What are you up to when you're not uh, trying to get your clan to continue being represented? Lord, y'all, can we just talk about Rosa and what a dumpster fire she is? <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, just like, God, what an like... oblivious... Is that what Dakota's like? Man, talk about a mirror. Anyways. Dakota um... was like early in her life. Early um... in her career. That's how she was. <sighs> okay. So, <laughs> I'm Little Red Dot. You can find me online. I... I play a lot of tabletop, I roll a lot of dice and tell stories with friends, um, including some of these friends and a cool podcast called Stitch of Fates. If you need more VTM, check us out. Um, lots of things there. Um, just just more vampires and then you can hear and then you can go there and you can come back here. Um, and then... Um, yeah, and the rest of the time, um, I'm spending a lot of my time right now over on Cobalt Press, where I'm the Twitch producer for them. So if you want to see some of the shows that I'm producing and I'm a part of um, over there, you can come check us out as we uh, we traverse Midgard. I'm sauce. And next up, we have Ollie Hopkins, played by the Bubbernaut. What are you up to when you're not um, trying to keep Grant in line, I guess? <laughs> Grant's always in line. Is he? I am. I am forever the dad in everything I do. In some weird way. Uh, I'm just living my best bubble life. I do also a lot of tabletop stuff. Surprise, surprise. Um, lots of video gaming over on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash the Bubbernaut. I partake in Stitch of Fate, um, which was already presented and said so. Uh, I play as Duke, uh, a Ventru, very, um, very keen on subverting the expectation of what a Ventru should be. Um, he's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm actually starting a new production starting February 2nd with Maggie. Uh, it's called The Haunting of Harrowstone. It will be over on my channel. It is a Pathfinder experience. And uh, there's a lot of other like amazing casters on board. I'm very excited for it. Also very nervous. Uh, just follow me on all the things. You guys will catch all the news, I promise. So yeah, and if you show up to that, you'll get to see my pecker. So, you know, that'll be exciting. <laughs> just putting that out there. I'm so <laughs> Make no, that your damn tagline. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there. Well, yeah. Bubsy, yeah. so yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah, intrigued. Yeah, yeah. I'm intrigued. <laughs> Bubsy, <now. laughs> yep. is, it, is it worth seeing? That's the question. Oh yeah, it's it, it, it's. I've got nothing. No words, man. Okay, definitely tune in. It's gonna be a good time. And of course, we have Ava Heloise, played by Miss Magitech. What are you up to when you're not uh, being fancy? <laughs> As always, the Twitter. <laughs> that was, was the best like, line. She, she fancy. She fancy all the time. Grant's like on the Twitter. Dang, she's fancy. Dang, yes, dangerously fancy. fancy is the problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Tracy, also known as Miss Magitech. Um, you can find me everywhere as Miss Magitech. Like the rest of this crew, I do a lot of tabletop stuff all over the internet and play video games and stream occasionally. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna be prepping for this uh, the the Legend tier game, uh, so that that's what I'll be up to for the rest of this weekend. Um, but other than that, yeah, you can catch me online, follow me, and, and see what I'm up to. 
I guess Perfect. that's me. Thank you. And last but not least, we have our wonderful storyteller painting all of these lovely, maybe and not so lovely scenes. <laughs> we have Mathis Games. What are you up to when you are not traumatizing everyone and putting them in fear as you capture them I'm in only, cars? I'm only part of yeah, that was the that was, that was <laughs> I'm only part of two tabletops and they're both traumatic. So you're both vampire. I'm, I'm this, I'm at uh, I'm at Stitch of Fate. Uh, we just released a new couple solo history character episodes if you want to go listen to that. Um, other than that, Illuminati podcast every weekend. We drop a new uh, episode. It's a podcast about aliens and ghosts and true crime and cryptids and you name it. If, if there's something you like in that kind of world, there's an episode you're going to enjoy listening to. Um, and other than that, the Mathis channel. I just video gaming content of all kinds of different stuff. No, no, uh, no specifics. That's it for me. All right, and that is going to wrap it up for today. I'll just double check to see if we had any donations. No donations for today's episode, but we will return next week with some more Vampire the Masquerade on Silence of Shadows. We're coming to a really <laughs> close end here. Uh, many, many episodes, a very, very long season, but a lot has had to happen. So we'll see you in a bit. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in, as well as just a reminder that we will have a show tomorrow, Mass Effect, if you're interested in it. Check it out, 10 a.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. UK. See ya. Bye.